Hello. Okay. I think we need to turn the fan off. Excellent, excellent. I see Carrie Ann is on. Okay, Demi. Demi Brown is on. How you doing, Demi? Tora is watching as well. We have a few of you guys on. God bless you. God bless you. We are so happy to have you on. Michelle Hussein, Nadia Farrington is on, Levan C. Lee is in the house, hallelujah, Estelle Miller, God bless you Estelle, Tori Freeman, hallelujah, I'm so happy and excited to have you guys on today, this is an amazing day, God bless you in the precious and mighty name of the Lord, our God and Savior Jesus Christ, amen, and I bless everyone who's on, I see Gurley Christian is here, praise the Lord, welcome in. Welcome in. My family is in the house. <laughs> I said, you know, I can't wait to meet some of you guys in person. I've known you for several years. Some of you over five years uh, from uh, social media. And I'm believing God for us to have a, a meet and greet at some point. And maybe you can come to the service at some point and we can just link up and spend a day with the prophet, you know. Prophet and his wife, you know. Just have a day where you just hang out with the prophet. Amen. And we minister to you, we pray with you, we give you in-depth teaching, and we just hang, eat, share, break bread, and we do all that sort of stuff, amen? Shelly Smith, she is uh, all the way from the United States of America. Praise the Lord. We just thank God for all of you today. Today we're going to be talking about a subject that is near and dear to my heart because there's so much people that's going through it. And in this time right now, what we're going through, we're, we're dealing with gates of, of evil work, workplace warfare adversaries and enemies okay so i want you guys to invite some people in because i believe that everyone is being challenged in four areas four or five areas that we're going to list amen this is a very powerful and timely subject i was going to uh, do something else but i felt led to do this because um there are so many people being attacked in that area whether they know it or not some people don't even recognize it that they're being attacked and even if even if you're okay how do you maintain what you have because there's always someone or something after your position because of the spirit of excellence upon you, because of the blessings of the Lord upon you, because because the favor of God is upon you. And there are a lot of people. Okay. Shelly Smith says she's a Nassau. Praise the Lord. She's a Nassau. Forgive me. I thought it was the United States. God bless you, Shelly Smith. Uh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were from America. Praise the Lord. But um, I see Wani. Wani all the way from Trinidad. Wani is so awesome. We bless God for Wani, and we bless God for Shannon, and we also want to send a shout out to Tiggy, our very good friend of the ministry. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we are, you guys are always in our prayers, no matter what. Even if we don't get to you, you're always in our prayers. We're always praying for you guys. If we don't get to interpret your dream, if we don't get to say it right away, if we don't get to meet you right away, then, you know, uh, we are still praying for you. That doesn't mean we we've not we've discounted it. Okay. You know, someone said, "Boy, prophet, you one of the most accessible prophets there is." People of the people of the go through 10, 15 people just to get to to meet with the pastor. Even the pastor, some of them not met with. Amen. And we still pray them through. So we know we know our worth. We know our salt. We know what we're doing. Amen. And so we don't need anybody to come and try to pull the ministry down. Uh, you know, with the negative comments or negative uh, reactions. Amen. But praise God. Amen. We want to talk about workplace warfare. What it is for you to go into work and you go to work and the minute you go to work, you can't even move at the corner. Every time you go to work, you develop vertigo. You develop a fogginess of memory. Every time you step foot on the premises of the job where you're at and one time you look forward to going to work. You enjoy going to work. 
Work was a pleasure to you. You were excited about work. I'm going to give you guys another three to four minutes to invite some people in. And I'm not going to say this too long, and I'm not going to say this a lot. But I need you guys to share. I'm going to, I'm going to get this out of the way right now, so I don't have to keep saying share, share, share. But I want you guys to share it. Some of you guys can share it on your uh, social media platform. Some of you guys can put paste and copy. Some of you guys can put this in your group because it is going to help someone get set free who is dealing with this particular, very pervasive, very wicked, wicked thing that people do on the job. First of all, your, the job that you make is, is designed by God for you to what? To provide for you and your family. In the scripture, it has been mentioned almost 700 times, work. Whatever you work to do, work with all your might as unto the Lord. A man shall not eat unless he what? Unless he works. By the sweat of his brow, you shall eat bread. All right. Uh, Second Thessalonians three and ten. You can go and read it, look it up. All right. It is about is about working. God put Adam in the garden to work. All right. So work is very important to sustaining yourself, to providing for your family, and also work is a way for you to earn an income or stipend. To, to, to experience the things you want to in this particular earthly realm or plane. I'll say that again. Work is for you to maintain, to pay for your way, to have food to eat, to enjoy yourself, and to what? Be a contributing member of society. That's why one of the greatest warfare you'll experience in your life will usually come from on your job because the enemy knowing this it's like a it's like a it's like a cream of the crop picking for him he knows this so he plants his he plants his agents in the workplace to fight against the saints of god all through scripture we've seen this happen we've seen where people that were doing god's business all right they came up against amazing serious opposition from the adversary because those gates that the enemy been using was through workplace spiritual warfare demonic gates that have been opened over people's job over their life over their favor listen we've prayed for so many people that they've lost their job and they've got fired unfairly and after we've prayed and ministered the lord restored them back and not only restored them, but promoted them. And not only promoted them, but gave them increase and favor. And we prayed right in that service. Several people in that service came. One lady was let go. She's not even from this country, but you know that's how she's making a living. That's how she's earning a living. Can you imagine someone being prejudiced against you because you're from another country? And indeed, she was from she was from Africa. All right, she's from Africa, and she said they let me go, man of God. You know, you know, we just got married. You have children. We have to put food on the table. You know, my husband isn't really working all that stable now, all right? And they framed her. And I told her, I told her, said, you know, listen, this is what happened to you, blah, blah, blah. And that's when she came up and said, yes, it is her. And we prayed for her and we decreed that God restore her back to her job. Let me tell you something, saints. We got to rise up and be so very, 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 very much into warfare this season concerning our, 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 our job, concerning our business, concerning things that God has given to us, all right? To make our make ends meet, all right. And so you know what happened? They found out. As a matter of fact, after that prayer, I think a week after that, the the people from Nassau called her in. Say they discovered that the woman who set her up was lying, and they asked her if she wanted a job back. But not only that, but with an elevation and another position at a higher ram. Let me tell you something. Last two weeks ago, I saw the woman driving a BMW. About three weeks ago, I said, "Man, I said things are going well." Yeah, you know, uh, and then she pull up in a BMW, guys, a white BMW. Let me tell you something. Would the enemy end for evil? If you guys stay tuned and watch it, watch it through, we're gonna we're gonna tear down some prayers. I'm not gonna make the teaching too long because because I want to be quick today, all right? But I need you guys to focus. I need you guys to listen, all right? Because there is a season and a time when God is saying, "I'm tired of them fighting you on your job. I'm tired of them." trying to set you up i'm tired of them seceding you many people have been promised position but all of a sudden they bring someone else in new to the company when you were promised the position they brought someone in from another country another town another place and you were set up and the person they brought in is satan himself some of them are devil in the blue dress some of them 
went over your head and they did political fandangling. And that's one of the reasons why there's a lot of warfare. Because it comes through politics, it comes through, it comes through gossiping, it comes through curry favor, it comes through nepotism, it comes through political favors, or you owe me something, or it comes through someone using occultic methods to su su uh, suppress you and cause you not to enter into that place. And we're going to talk about the symptoms of when you are being overridden and being override because of what? Your, because of your predilection or because of your stance on a certain thing. All right? Let me tell you something. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they say. Oh, you ain't get you ain't get the vaccine, so you can't get promoted. They promoting people with the vaccine and without the vaccine. That is not a predilection. That is not a basis for you not to get promoted because you don't take a vax. All right, or you don't get a job. And I know this is politically incorrect, but it is the real people are being people are being manipulated and controlled. But they're using that, knowing that some people you were supposed to be promoted three or four times, but because you took a stance on this vax. They know that they know that they were supposed to vote you anyhow, but they use it as a way to keep you down because of this vax. And I know there are many people who could testify that what I'm saying is true. Prophet, you know you're right. Prophet, you're right because you were supposed to have been elevated, promoted, but because because of this vax situation, they use that as an excuse. Yes, to oppress, suppress, and keep you down. As a matter of fact, mighty God, we're going to get deeper into this. I need you guys to share, please. Those of you who are just on, I need you to share. Mighty God, because someone is being set free right now. God is delivering someone right now. Mighty God. Hallelujah. If you want to be delivered and set free, then you tune in. You stay to the very end because the Lord will set you free. Many people, hallelujah, are being fought. And the warfare that they've released to people, it comes from several different angles. And we're going to talk about the different angles. Of where it comes from but let's let's look at some scriptures let's look at some scriptures that are going to validate and talk about my case and what we're saying right here hallelujah mighty god mighty god they don't want to see you move forward they don't want to see you go into another level hallelujah lord sometimes it ain't even people on your job it's people off the job that hear about the good work you're doing they hear about the impact you're making hallelujah I need you guys, hallelujah, to tune in very closely because this is a subject that's so vast and so, so entrenched and it's so prevalent that people don't even want to speak about it. Mighty God, hallelujah. Some of y'all, they're trying, to, they're trying to close down your business. Mighty God. Some of them are trying to close down your shop. Some of them are trying to close down your company. Some of them are trying to get you now to be so frustrated, so angry that you walk off. Some of them are trying to cause problems between you and your boss when once you and your boss were cool. You know I'm talking right. You know I'm talking good. You know that this is the truth, guys. Come on, I need you to share right away, quickly, 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 quickly. Hallelujah. And it pleased King Darius to set over the kingdoms a hundred and twenty prince which should rule over the whole kingdom. This is this is Daniel chapter six, all right, beginning at verse one. And over these three presidents of whom Daniel was the first, that the prince might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. <coughs> so in other words, the king um, he promoted and put in place a hundred and twenty presidents to rule throughout his kingdom. And out of that kingdom, out of that hundred and twenty, he put three to be the major ones that everybody have the answer to. And out of those out of those three, he made Daniel the number one. He made Daniel the number one. In this season, God is going to make you the number one. Whenever you get elevated. Whenever you're about to get promoted, whenever you're about to enter into the final season of your life, the enemy will take an occasion to rise up against you and create warfare. He will create spiritual uh, antagonism and he will begin to attack your character. He begin to attack your life and begin to try to set you up to cause you to lose your position because 
God is going to cause favor to come into your life. All right, let's read on. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and because and princes because he had an excellent spirit in him and the king sought to set him over the whole realm. I'll stop right there for, for season. The king sought to set him over the whole realm. In other words, Daniel, you have such an amazing ability uh, to rule and you've shown yourself to be a man of excellence. Not only am I going to set you over the three princes and make you the head over them where all the other 119 have the answer to you, but I'm, I'm considering, I'm considering setting you over the whole realm. Such was the, such was the favor of God, such was the spirit of excellence, such was was Daniel's character. Now, here's the thing. That angered the 119 uh, wise men or magis, or whatever you want to call them, all right? Presidents, magis, magicians, you know, uh, <clears throat> wise men. And this frustrated these people. See, people get angry with you when there's news of your elevation. And he thought, they heard it. He said, you know what? This guy is so awesome. You know, uh, uh, Raquel Baston is such a, an amazing woman of God. You know, I'm thinking about blessing her with so much things and so much this and so much that. I'm getting ready to elevate her this and that position and this position. And they've heard it. People hear it and they get angry at it. People hear your name being mentioned for favor. People hear your name being mentioned to, by the boss. People hear your name being mentioned by the manager. People hear your name being mentioned by the supervisor. The supervisor hear your name being mentioned by the boss asking the supervisor about you and they take an occasion to, to have feelings and to shoot you down and knock you down. No, 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 no. You know, uh, yeah, you, you might think that, but you, listen, they mean it. They mean it in a junkyard dog. Yeah, they, but they, they, they don't get along. They don't play well with others. You know, they, they, yeah, yeah, you think they know good, but you don't know like how I know them because I work with them every day. See, when God has favor on your life, People are going to come at you and they're going to try to turn people against you. Sometimes you wonder why all of a sudden people just turn them on you. Am I right, guys? Am I right? You once had a good relationship with them. Now they can't stand your guts. You and your manager were in good, good standing. They loved you. The king loved Daniel. The king loved Daniel. But yet they sought an occasion to turn the king against Daniel. But they couldn't find nothing in Daniel. So they had to use Daniel's religion against him. That's why you should not stop praising God. That's why you should not stop worshiping God, mighty God. That's why you should give God glory. That's why you should continue to use your presence as an influence to bind up the wickedness that's done in the, that's done in the, uh, uh, the office. Amen? And I, I, I tell you a real true story. There was a lady, they was about to fire her. They was about to let her go. As a matter of fact, the boss began to uh, turn on her once she had favor with the boss. When she checked stock, I told her, she, I said, woman of God, there's a lady in there who you help. You actually got the lady the job. You actually recommend the lady the job. This lady is the one who's doing it to you. The one who you took in. The one who you vouched for. Put your name on the line to get a chance. Now has been has, has, has gotten jealous of you in the workforce. And now turn everything against you. Turning, uh, turning the man and woman of God against you from this multinational corporation. I said, here's what to do, woman of God. And I gave her the instructions. And I told her what to do. And I told her what to do. And guess what? She changed the narrative of that story. And her and another person who I ministered to, they came and they got together. Follow the instructions. You hear me? Follow the instructions. And they ousted that woman. You hear me? That woman, that woman had a pack of things up and she was ousted. They ran her out of the place. You hear me? They ran her out of the place because she was coming on there. And I told her what the woman was bringing. The woman was bringing things into the office to cause the office to be bound, to cause the office to be kept in bondage. Amen? I see my very good friend, uh, Pastor Cornelia Alvin Smith, very good friend of mine. I see Prophet Tracy's on the line. It's so good to see my good brothers. Love them. Love them to the moon and back as we say. And I bless God for them. Amen. We've we've had many adventures together. As a matter of fact, he was he was one of the he was one of the he's one of the first guys who was there with me when I bought my first car. And we were there together when we went and we got my P O R S H E. Yes, this is many years ago. This is a very good friend. And it's so good to see my brother. Amen. 
God bless you, man of God. Welcome in. And so what happened is, what happened is this this particular individual had decided that they were going to what? They were going to cap this person's life. They were going to keep this person at a certain place. And they were destroying the person's character. You hear me? Deceit and that snake spirit, that viper spirit that has been unleashed against you, you will be the last person to know it. But God, through the eyes of the prophet, reveal, I mighty God, reveal who was who was a snake hiding and sabotaging her behind the back. Turn everybody in the office, mighty God, and try to steal the position. Thank God she was able to mount an attack, follow the instructions, and they were able to cut her attack, what this woman was doing, and she was released from her position. As a matter of fact, she had the whole office turning against the woman of God. She had the whole office turn against her through what? Through her trafficking of her evil machinations, through whispering, the whisperer. I call him demon whisperer, and we can do a teaching on that. Those who whisper against you, those who peep and mutter against you, those who try to bring that on the job for you to lose your job and lose the, the, the way to support your family and to take bread out of your family mouth. You hear me? They want to stop you from eating. But Daniel had a spirit of excellence. Daniel had a spirit of excellence. Mighty God. This is an amazing. This is amazing, guys. I'm going to minister to many of you all if you all stay on the line. As a matter of fact, the more people you invite in and you call on, I'm going to minister under the unction, under fire of God. Amen? I want you guys to invite some people in because, because you're going to help somebody get set free who is now having to fight, mighty God, for their position and who have to fight for their job or the way they earn an income to support their family. They're trying to take bread out your mouth. They're trying to cause you to get demoted. They're trying to cause you to lose what you have by, by, by politics, hallelujah, or politics, by coercion, by eavesdropping, by blackmailing, also by what? By, by, by what we call curry favoring. Hallelujah. You curry favoring up to this person because now you want to get in the boss's ear to paint a picture of this person who once had favor with the boss. You see, you see they did it. They did it to the king. Even the king who loved Daniel, who decided to set him all over, hallelujah, all over the nation. Now, they figured a way how to trick him. Let's read on. Uh, then the presidents sought uh, to find an occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could not find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error in him, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall find, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find in him concerning the law of his God. Because they want to use the law of God. How wicked that is. How wicked it is for men. Because they cannot find nothing wrong with you. You have a spotless character. You are upright in all your dealings. You don't steal a pen. You don't, you don't lollygag on a job. You don't take candies. You don't take the, the staples. The stapler. You don't spend 90% of your time surfing. And tell the man you're working. You are productive. You give the man his 8 hours or 10 hours. Whatever it is. You do that in and out. You are a model employee. And yet you... you you cannot be bribed. You cannot be bribed or you cannot uh, uh, be found to be uh, in, involved in any mix-up or mess-up. So they have to contrive one. They have to create one. They have to use your religion against you. They have to release your relationship against you with God to create a venue where you cannot worship the Lord. You cannot worship your God in one purpose and in one place. You have to now follow the laws of the king. And the laws of God will supersede any laws of a sovereign land. Hear me, hear me once again. This is how the bark is going to come in as well. The laws of God supersede any laws of the land. And I, I'm saying that you should follow Caesar and do what is right. In as, in as much as it is, does not interfere with your God and following his rules and laws according to the dictates of the Ten Commandments. All right? This is what the Lord is saying in this season. The Lord is showing forth even right now. There are people who don't even know that there have been plots, there have been, there have been intrigues, there have been clandestine movements, there have been covert operations, covert against your job. You don't even know it. But the Lord has kept you. 
The Lord has preserved you. The Lord has sheltered you. Even in the night season when there's warfare. Mighty God, I saw last night in my dream a man dressed in all black and he was trying to enter into the door. What does it mean? It simply means that this man is a mystery man. This man is looking into my life. This man is intrigued by what, I'm, what is happening with me. He's trying to look into my inner life, trying to figure me out. Don't know how I move. Won't understand how I move. But also, you see, he's dressed in black. So that lets me know this is a man who doesn't want to be seen or known. This is a man who doesn't want me to know that he's investigating and looking into my life. But God will reveal the thing to you because you stay in prayer. See, prayer is what's going to keep you, mighty God, from ever falling into the hands of the wicked that's assigned to your workplace warfare. Let me tell you something. There are many people praying, but they're not watching. Hallelujah. I'll say it again. There are many people praying, but they're not watching. There are many people watching, but they're not praying. You must combine prayer and watching. It must be a double-edged sword. It must be a one-two punch combination. You have to pray and you have to watch. You have to watch and you have to pray because the enemy will seek an occasion to come against you. When you get a promotion, when you get elevated, when you get uh, uh, accolades, when they're celebrating you, pray because the enemy attacks just after warfare and just before victory. He attacks you after warfare. He attacks you just before victory. And he attacks you again in victory. When you are celebrating, as you're celebrating, you begin to pray as well. As you're celebrating, you begin to what? Watch as well. Because the enemy looks for you to drop your guard. And in that season and in the time of celebration and, 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 and you know, reveling and enjoying what the fruits of your labor, the enemy will seek an occasion to attack your life. So you have to watch and pray. Nehemiah had... Nehemiah had the travel in one hand, and he had the bow and arrow in one hand. He had the travel in one hand, and he had the bow and arrow in one hand. They sought an occasion. To, uh, Sanballat and Tobiah did the same thing to Nehemiah. The enemy does not want you to construct or rebuild the walls of your life. Whatever the wall of your life may be, it may be your healing. It might be your deliverance. It may be you getting out of a situation that you've been in, a toxic situation. It may be where you've cut off some friends and all of a sudden, these friends were so toxic in your life. Now they're trying to come back again and reconnect with you. Why all of a sudden, after three, four years, they want to reconnect with you when you've not heard from them in countless years? Let me tell you something, guys. It is because there is something that is about to happen to you. Satan uses the most available vessel to get to you. He uses the most available vessel to get to you. And so they will connect with you. Once they connect with you, all of a sudden you recognize and see that you're no longer where you are in God. And so now the, the hull has been breached. The wall has been breached of your life. Now you begin to find out that you're having terrifying nightmares, horrible dream, a lot of reversal. Every three months you're getting fired. Every three months you're changing job. Every three months you're getting evicted. One lady came to me, she said, Prophet, she said, in the six months of this year, six, seven months of the year, I've been evicted every month. Can you imagine someone being evicted every month, hallelujah, for the last six months? That means basically they spend a month wherever they go and they get evicted. And I told her what the problem was. I told her this what the deal was. I told her what spirit was falling on. I told her the books we've written concerning that. Amen? I've told her about even what is causing the problem to happen, even something concerning her husband, which he's doing in secret. And I told him, listen, you need to come to see me by yourself, man of God, because there's something you're doing that you're opening up. You're opening up this thing over your wife. Amen? You're opening up this thing over your wife, and this has to be corrected because there's a doorway open through pharmacia and sorcery. And see, this causes them to work for people, and they don't want to pay him. This causes them to work for people, and they always shortchange him. This caused them to do excellent work, but never could get the full amount, never could get the recognition, never could get the celebration, never could get the, uh, the elevation that's deserving of his full potential. Many people have not recognized their full potential on the job or in their life or in the ministry they are because there is something that is fighting them concerning, concerning their career, their elevation, and their destiny. Mighty God, if you stick around, guys, we're going to minister to you. We're going we're gonna to minister to you in... In a short while, I'm just going to lay the groundwork because there are so many people, hallelujah, they don't want you to elevate. And when you hear people saying, boy, they like you in this office now. You, 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 you're the darling of the boss. Boy, you're the, you're the boss, man. Uh, you know, boy, the boss just, I mean, the boss, uh, you know, use the boss pet. You know, 
Yeah, you're the boss pet. You, 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 you're the boss. You're really close. Like, oh, man. And they say that, but they're smiling. But their eyes are not smiling. Well, you, 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 come, you come around here to run things. You basically come to take all that job. <laughs> they laugh at me that. And they, they, they say that as a joke. But they don't, it's, it's not a joke. They've already discussed you. Sometimes you go in the office and you can feel the darts in your back. You can feel the you can feel the darts in your neck. You can feel all of them go quiet. They go quiet when you come into office. They begin to gang up on you. Why? Because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Listen, they won't necessarily even like each other, but because the favor and the light of God is on you, saints. Because God is elevating you. God is showing you off. Because of the light and the soul that you are on the job, mighty God. The enemy is sort of occasion to create gangs, cliques, schisms, and isms against you. And now they begin to plot against you. Now they're unified against you. And you could feel the heat. You could feel the arrows. You could feel the barbs. You could feel the fiery darts whenever you enter into the atmosphere. It's a hostile work environment. And now whenever you decide to go to work, it's a fight to get to work. It's a fight to get up on the bed. Whenever you get on the premises, all hell breaks loose. Mind battles, mind battles, anxiety, panic attacks, fearfulness. You begin to feel fearfulness. You begin to doubt yourself, doubt the fact that you could do the job. You begin to misfire. Now your boss that was once with you, your boss begin to criticize your work. Your boss begin to lambaste you, laugh at you. They begin to join in with the boss and now they're shutting doors in your face. They're cutting you off in the meeting. Your opinion no, matter, no longer matters when one time ago, your opinion mattered. You were making an impact. You were, you, were, you were listened to. And not only that, you were heated. Your voice was heated. Now you're like a joke in the office. Now everybody's coming down at you. Listen, guys. This is what is happening on the job. You are being fought. You hear me? You are being fought. And, 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 and it comes from the physical realm. It comes from the emotional realm. It comes from uh, 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 the spiritual realm. And sometimes it is darkness, it is jinxes, it is hexes, it is vexes. Sometimes they turn the whole office through you, uh, on you because they've brought in, they've brought in charms in the office. Mighty God, let's be real. And they control the whole office. Sometimes they're using their body to control the office. You've known of persons who've used their body to, 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 co to coerce and spin the office around. Because now they're sleeping with the boss. Now they're dealing with the boss. And so they turn around everything. Mighty God. Mighty God, they turn around everything. They have the office in chaos. They have the office in terror. They have everybody now fighting each other. Now everybody now doesn't know where to go, what to do. There's a fearful uh, uh, environment over the office. Everybody's trying to guard his own work because you don't know what's going to happen. Everybody is totally fearful because it is an atmosphere of terror and fear in the office where you work or on the job where you work at now every time you turn around there's a memo you get in every time you turn around there's another memo you get in every time you turn around there's something the boss want to see you about one time your work was highly praised one time your work was highly loved one time you were singled out for uh, uh you know for an example or, or you know to to to, uh, to to put on a pedestal now they are looking at your work and finding all kinds of loopholes and finding all kinds of faults and flaws they now demoted you they haven't they've been taking the position from you but they got you doing what i call kitchen work they got you doing work below your dignity they got you doing work that you know that you do need to do because it is for junior level entry guys now they got you doing this work now that you get your promotion hallelujah you got your promotion they decide that they gonna put you in the closet i know of two situations now where they was fighting the people's promotion. And I prayed. I told them a couple of years ago. I said, you guys are going to get promoted. All right? And I spoke it live too. They heard it. There are people who heard it. And they block it. When I look again, the, both of the parties. This happened so many on so many occasions. They said they got a letter coming from the high office that they were being superseded. And I said, Lord, didn't you know you allow me to speak this word in their, their life? And I lose the word. I let them go. I let them have their mail, so to speak. And now they're telling me they're being superseded effectively, thus and thus and thus and thus and thus. And so I went before the Lord and I said, well, Lord, you, you spoke it now. You know, this is your word. And then when I look again, God flip it. And they got the elevation. They got the promotion. Hallelujah. And they got what they will deserve. And they, they're getting the income that is commensurate with their title. Now they said, oh, yeah, you're, oh, you're, 
or you'll get the promotion. But now what we can do is we can put you in a little cubby hole. We can put you all in closets. All right. I don't care if they put you in a little rat hole. You made it the best rat hole you could have. You you stay there because if you carry the presence of God, God's gonna cause that rat hole, that cubby hole, that closet, whatever it is, to shine. Let them laugh now, but they can cry later because the word of the Lord already went forward. Amen. They wanna they wanna say, yeah, you got this promotion, but you be blocking you here. Yeah, your promotion is only a joke because now look at you in the closet. Amen. Because we because we laughing at you. It's a private joke. They mocking you. They try to mock you as they were trying to mock Daniel. They were trying to find a way to breach his hull. They'll find they try to find a way to to communi uh to, to, to control him and to break him down and they were communicating with each other in secret. They were having secret meetings without without the man of God knowing. They're having meetings against you. They're having meetings behind your back. But the Lord shall cause you to see what they're doing. The Lord shall reveal their secret. The Lord will cause you to be ten steps ahead of those that are working uh, warfare, or right, spiritual warfare, workplace warfare into your life to cause trouble to come to you, to cause you to get fired, lose your job, want to walk off, want to quit. Anytime you think about going to the job, you have headache. Anytime you step on the premises, there's problems, there's headaches. Anytime you go on a job, you want to pass out dizzy. You feel bad. Some of you have strange sickness that the devil can't even find. The, uh, the doctors can't even find. Because the devil has done this thing. There's not equipment on earth that they've made that can detect spiritual things. You know what I mean? That are spiritually desired. Nothing wrong with you. You have mental problems, anxiety, panic attack, heart palpitations. And there's no equipment that can tell you. The doctor said you check out fine. Nothing wrong with you. Because it's all in the realm of the spirit. Because they're fighting you. I would pray for a lady every morning. This woman was probably doing really well at her job and she was breaking all of the records that they had set. Amen? And so she would call me every morning and she would park on the side of her job. Can't go to the next side because the wheels start to shake. She start to panic. She want to pass out. She can't even drive. She had to cut the car off. I have to pray the woman of God through. I have to pray her through. Break the force and, 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 and give her strategies on what to do. And when she get now, 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 see, that's, that's going there. That's when it's happening. Now, when she reach on the premises, the warfare break out in, I mean, in earnest, all right, in earnest. And she can't get to the, the office. She have to go in her office, shut the door, can't say nothing to nobody. And she sweats, cold sweats from 10 to 5, lock up in the office, pretending she doing her work. But she trembling, she nervous, she dizzy, she can't speak, she can't, she can't talk properly. They have to come get her. Husband have to come get her. She waits for everybody to leave. Then runs to the car and go. Can't drive. Have to wait for the husband. Must he come and drive her back home? You hear me? That's what was going on because they placed the stuff there for her to step on. And, and, and she was in so much problems. Listen, if I didn't deal with that, if I didn't deal with the situation, I would say she lying. I would say that doesn't happen because, you know, she's a nice person. She helps people. You know, she always has a kind word for people. Let me tell you something. People have been talking about you because they're watching your ministry, they're watching your life, they're watching your movements, and they're not always happy for you because they had seen you in a particular box, they already had you pegged in the box, and now you're about to be elevated. People are talking good about you, that that they that, that, that they value your opinion, and so they begin to work on you even from out of the job. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the job, but that's mostly what happens. It could be family members, guys. It could be family members that are working against your life unbeknownst to you it can be people who you thought were going to celebrate you and be happy for you or so-called friends instead of validating you and being happy for you they're the ones that are initiating the warfare because they know someone in the office and they plan a false narrative about you why do you think some people turn against you why do you think some bosses no longer like you they plan a false narrative and they twist the story as they did with as they did with daniel as they did with joseph as they did with king david all right. Yes, yes, yes. The false narrative that they that 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 that, that you know, they 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 spewed upon you. They spewed it upon you, and they and they cause your 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 friend and the king to turn against you, mighty God, to turn against you and to and to begin to persecute you and begin to fight you for no reason, no reason, none at all. All right. And and you try to figure out well what happened. Me and my boss had a good relationship. You know, we were very close. We would pray together. I would pray through certain situations. I would, I would, I would, I would, you know, I would go, I would go into fasting for them. Uh, because when they rise, I rise because we were tame. Now, now it's like I'm their worst enemy. Now I'm the one getting all the suicide assignments. I'm getting all the dog assignments. You know, I'm no longer in the inner circle. I, I no longer hear the counsel 
uh, and the good things that are being planned. My, my, as, a, as a matter of fact, they treat me now like a stepchild, so to speak. I'm being fought. I'm being prosecuted. I'm, I'm the one now that is almost about to get kicked out. I'm getting memos. I'm getting warnings. I'm, I'm getting uh, 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 suspension letters, even suspended. Even now, they're taking days off of my workplace. You know, I went a couple for a couple hours. You know, I told the boss, but yet they're still deducting out of my pay. They're figuring ways to torment me and fight me on this job. And I know who it is. I just told I told her, uh, you know, a woman of God, you know, was praying and counseling on yesterday. And I told her, you know, what the deal was. She said, mighty God, man of God, I know who it is. I know who the person is on the job. I know who the person is. And she called the name off. And she said, because I had a dream where I was, I, she was walking through the office and she was burning sage. She was burning sage through the office, going through all the office, burning sage through the office. But she couldn't see me. But I was walking behind her. Excuse me. I was binding up everything she was doing. I was canceling everything she was doing. And she said, in the natural, this woman goes around and collects information from everybody. She loves to know your business. And she asks you these offhanded questions. And it seems simple. But what in reality she's doing is she's building a profile. She's building a profile on you because she wants to she wants to go and she wants to she wants to go and try to uh, paint you in a very negative picture to the boss who she's very close with and apparently she and the boss are very close so she is using that now as a point of contact to get you fired if she wants to she's letting you know as a veiled threat me and the boss are very close what she's saying is we're very close and you know we listen to whatever I say you know and we, we go be like this what she's saying, in essence, is if you don't play your cards right, if you run me hot, if you get on my nerves, if you if you run on my favor, if you don't let me control you, to manipulate you, and you don't you don't fall and toe the line and and katow and kiss my feet, you won't have this job. You won't have this job long. I could I could, I could, I, could, I could tell the boss about you. I could paint you negatively, and also I could make your life a living hell. There are some people on the job. Your life has been a living hell, and when once it was an awesome job. It was an amazing job. You love your job. You look forward to your job. Now it's like you in hell. Am I right, guys? Is, does this make sense? Amen? It does, doesn't it? Let me tell you something. Daniel, Daniel gives so much insight into, into how we have been fought. And this story was, this, this, this thing is like 2,400 years ago. Even now it's relevant. Even now this is very relevant. All right? Even now it's relevant. Let me tell you something. There are some people so seductive, so deceptive, so beguiling. You can never match them in their guise. They could just finish having lunch with you and they just send a memo against you. You could just have it finish talking to them nice and go into the little girl's christening. That time they plot your downfall, they already have it enacted. They already will fire you. Someone will fire you and go take a trip and come back later. Yes, that's what the guy did to me. And I said, man, you know, I thought this guy was my friend. I thought he was, you know, bigger than that. I looked at him as a big brother. You know, the man, the man, leave a letter for me, fire me, go on away and fire me. Mighty God, finish shaking my hand, tell him everything cool. We finish talking, you know, I think everything good. You're doing a good job. Go on away, go on away and have the people bring me the letter. Can you, can you see how some people do? My subordinate did that with my former boss and started with the new one. I am, I am releasing fire every day. <laughs> I'm out here releasing by every day. Amen, 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 amen. It's true. It's on my job with the boys on the job. See, this is from Prophet Tracy and Hadassah, midwife. Prophet Tracy and Hadassah, you guys are saying the truth because, because there are some frenemies, all right? They started off good with you, all right? But they were only, they were only doing that to, to gain an entry into your life, to find out how you operate. Now they become your worst enemy. There are some people now, because of murmuring and gossiping and slander, you and your good friend have now turned to, to become enemies, amen? And you're trying to figure out what happened because they've gone and they whispered. Yes, they're undermining. They're undermining. They're also condemning. They're also whispering. They're, this the whisperers. I call it demonic whisperers. They whisper, all right? And they cause, tro they cause problems. I, you know what I call them? I call them fiend, arch fiends. That's what they are because they never, they, you never see them coming. They kill you softly. They're not going to give you the hard kill. As a matter of fact, they can come and they can cry with you too. Some of them can come and say, man, I hear what happened, man. That's terrible, you know. Man, oh man, you know, what happened? And if the Lord were to reveal to you that one who cried and praying with you and saying, it can be better. Don't worry, something's coming. When you would have found the amount of letters 
and, and memos and reports they sent on you, it was enough to bury a cow. You hear me? Because they can't stand to see your shine. They gang up on you. You hear me? The 119, the 119 presidents in the book of Daniel that came against him, they were they were not even they didn't even like each other because it was very competitive. But guess what? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. If you my if you my enemy uh, and I and someone else is hating on you and hating on me, uh, that's 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 how they could get together. Amen. They bond together to stop you because it's a secret grudge, it's a secret hatred, it's a common it's a common foe. They unite against. They unite against a common foe because they want to destroy what the Lord has done in your life. I need you guys to share this quickly. Amen. Because the Lord is doing the same thing for you. The Bible even says that Herod and Pilate, they were enemies. Herod and Pilate didn't even like each other. But because they had a common interest, they became fast friends because of Jesus Christ. Amen. A common enemy brought Herod and Pilate together and they became friends. Amen. I decree and declare that all those who are on one accord after the order of, of the Tower of Babel, against your destiny and against your purpose i command them to be scattered i command them to fall down and die i decree every evil conspiracy and every evil confederacy that has been fighting against you that has been trying to hold you down and keep you back that's been trying to enter into your life through stopping you from making a living eating and and and, and, and having a good time and supporting your family i crush it in the realms of the spirit i crush it over your life i crush it over your life some people even have to take their own employ their own employer to court because it's such hor horrendous uh, uh, curry favor and also horrendous evil policies and 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 clickishness if I could use that word and schism and isms that they have to take their own boss to court for unfair treatment and for workplace warfare for letting everyone get away with everything but the minute you even try to even go to the bathroom they will write you up. Everybody coming in late, some of them carrying on with profane, profane, uh, profane, uh, uh, profane language, profane language, sorry, excuse me, profane language. But the minute the minute you say, uh, listen, you know, um, I'm going to be a little late, they, they want to throw the whole book at you. They want to read you the right act. They want they want to put you to pasture. But everybody else could get away with murder. The woman who, who controlled the office, she comes in when she wants to. She talks to the boss however she wants to. She doesn't do her work. She slacks. She controls the whole office with her Jezebelic ways. All right? Or, listen, Jezebel could operate you a man too. He could maybe sleeping with a woman boss and controlling the whole atmosphere and getting people fired if you get on his nerves or you or you happen to look at him funny. He could get you fired because now the boss will listen to whatever he says. Listen, guys, this is a serious thing we are dealing with. We are dealing with this, mighty God, this evil wickedness because the Bible, again, I say, mention work what? Seven over 700 times because the enemy knows where you're going and i decree and declare even right now i told a lady yes listen they've been fighting you on the jaw for the longest time you taking high blood pressure pills you got diabetes you you you, you break it out on your face you having so much things happening to you you're losing your hair you, you can't seem to get pregnant i said now nah, they're getting ready to fire you because they've been plotting and working on this for years at least 10 years they're working to fire this person but because she was a praying woman, because God was blocking everything they were doing, uh, 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 they couldn't fire her. But the last straw has been when she fell down at her work and lost her baby. And I told her, I told her this was what's happening. And they plan, they 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 planned this thing to cause the fall, and she did lost the baby. And I said, now, woman of God, just hang tight, because they can tell you sit down. They want to speak to you concerning your job because they're making your post redundant. And I said, don't sit down, stand up, just tell them everything cool. Thank you for the time you were here. Thank you for the uh, for the time that I was here. Make sure my pay is right. See you. Thank you. Goodbye. Pack your things up and move up. Will the woman tell us savings? So you need to sit down because what you what you get ready here? Uh, you ain't you ain't like this. You need to sit down. Sit down. Are you sure? Because what what, you, what I get ready to say? You, you, I don't know. You can need you can need you can need you can need an ambulance when you finish. That that's that sound like that's like a boss telling you something. And you have a glee. There's a demonic glee with it. You take it. You take a delight in taking bread out of someone's mouth. You take a delight in trying to stop a person from eating. You take a delight in in, in, in causing someone to live. You take a delight with a demonic glee in that. You try to stop someone's life. Mighty God, uh, that's demonic. You need to stop it. But guess what? When they gave her 
her papers, guess what? The first week, she woke up feeling so alive. You hear me? She could, she stopped taking whatever she's taking. She came off whatever she came off. She was so full of joy. She got her life back. She got her complexion back. She lost, you know, uh, a bunch of pounds. This is the happiest I've ever seen that woman. She got her life back. You hear me? Sometimes, sometimes when they think they're doing you evil, they're actually doing you a favor. Because God took her the toxic environment. Yes, yes, God took up the toxic environment, give her back her life, give her back her life because you know, one one guy was told, listen, if you don't leave if you don't leave this if you don't leave this toxic job with all this demonic stuff on it and with all this warfare, I give you a month and after that you can die. Your your blood vessels are about to burst. You hear me? You're having chronic migraines, you're having all kinds of heart palpitation, you 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 you're not yourself anymore. You know, you, you you're constantly worried, you you have sleepless nights, you have insomnia. You know, you, you, you're you constantly worrying every time you go on this job. It's no longer pleasure. It's no longer a great environment to work. Yes, for that season, it might have been good. But now they're fighting you right now uh, 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 for your life. They, they're going to, the enemy wants to take your life on this job because you're taking, you're taking 10 different pressure pills now. You stay at the pharmacy. You stay uh, on these things. Uh, and, and, and now your life is about to be forfeit if you stay on this job. You need to leave this job because this job is toxic to you. And right after he left the job, mighty God, God raised him up. And now he's in ministry. He's flowing in ministry, mighty God. He's flowing in ministry. It's time to get him out of our bodies. I decree and declare, anybody trying to raise up the enemy against you, anybody is trying to raise up the enemy against you, for you to have sickness, illness, disease. You know what a disease is? A disease simply means you are not at ease. You are dis-ease. You have dis-ease. You're not ease. You're not at ease. You're not easy. You know, you are dis-eased. Dis-ease opens up your body for something called adrenaline. Adrenaline is for fight or flight. Cortisol is for flight or flight. These particular chemicals are to get you out of trouble. If a bear is chasing you, if a crook comes against you, if you're being you're chased by, you know, serial killer, whatever the case may be, you have to stay for your life, right? That's when you use it, and only for short bursts. But when you're in a toxic environment, where they're fighting against you constantly, you know, you're under all this pressure, because it's now turned to a toxic environment, your body is now releasing this chemical called cortisol and adrenaline. The adrenaline is being dumped into your body, but you're not going, you're not running from a bear. But technically you are in a sense, you know, but you're not moving. That's designed to get you, to move you, to cause you to, to run, to fight or flight, to, you know, to, to, to have that power, right? To, to, to get out there, it's like a turbo booster, right? But you're doing that every day, 15 years, 20 years, and your system, your heart is being enlarged, your, your, your vessels and, you know, your brain is, is having this chemical dumped in the system, and, and it's causing, you know, dangerous, you know, afflictions in your body, amen? Because it has nowhere to go, because they're building up this toxic environment so you could, so you could literally fall out of your job, right? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless God for what we've been doing. We bless God for all that's on. Like I say, I bless God for Shannon. Thomas is such a wonderful friend. We bless God for Tiggy. We bless God for Wani. We bless God for all our Trinidadian friends that have supported us. And we bless God for their wonderful feedback. We don't need no criticism. We don't need no negativity. We can leave it just like that. And Shannon has seen the blessings. Shannon is so blessed. Tiggy is so blessed. As a matter of fact, they're sowed into the ministry like never before. And they're seeing God bless them. Amen? And we know what God is doing. So we, we, we know what God is doing. Amen? They're seeing the blessings. And they're partnering with us. Amen? They're not complaining. If you're going to complain, just stay off the channel. If you're going to complain, come off the channel, please. We don't need you. We need people like Shannon Thomas. We need people like Wani. We need people like Tiggy. Tiggy. Tiggy was saying, I don't believe in Prophet Spencer. I don't believe in Prophet Spencer. I don't believe in that Prophet. At first, that's what he was saying. But now, mighty God, he asked his wife about me. And he says, he's a true man of God. And he told me he's going to sow his first fruits to the ministry. 
and we bless God. Yes, because you know what happened? We've seen it. And at first, he didn't even believe. He didn't even want to have nothing to do. But bless God for Shannon persistency. Shannon consistency. Shannon, I, 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 I bless God for you. And I bless God for the wisdom you have. You have so much wisdom. You and Wani. And I think, I think Wani, I think Wani turned you on to me. I'm not sure. I think Wani turned you on to me. I'm not sure. But I bless God for all of my Trinidadian friends who are supportive. Amen. Whether it's through prayer, whether it's through, through sowing, however the Lord leads. We don't ask nobody for nothing. You sow as God lead. You're not obligated to do nothing. Amen. But if you see the worth of our ministry, then you sow. Amen. But if you, if you don't, then that's fine. Because God still makes a way. And we still get a pour into your life anyhow. But there's something about being faithful. And in a way, that's sort of like stealing when you don't, when you don't sow anyhow. Because you're eating. I'm just saying it. You might want to hear it, that's fine. God's laws don't change. It's not new age teaching. It's simply saying that if you sow, you will reap. You reap what you sow. I turn Shannon on to you. Okay, so it's Nicole. All right, it's Nicole. All right, Nicole. I got you. Praise God. Praise God. We bless God for Kemi Camps. Amen. We see in God. I bless the day Wani. Wani. Directed me to your page. It's Wani. God bless you, Kemi Camps. Amen. 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 Wow. Wani, we bless God for you. We bless God for you. And I just want to briefly address what, I, what I've been hearing. I, I'm not combative. I don't want to fight nobody. Your opinion is your opinion. You do what, whatever works for you, you do it. Amen. But I saw where a particular minister went on and he was saying, point all his books because what he was talking about so the reaping is wrong. I don't understand what happened, but because you have an opinion and because you have some personal problem, that doesn't change the word of God. The Lord said, as long as the earth remains, there will see there will be seed time and harvest. And let me tell you something. God said, Jesus Christ said, I didn't come to take away the law. I come to fulfill it. Amen. And so, yes, we see it in the in the book of Acts. Even in the book of Acts, they still talk about giving and sowing because Everybody was on one accord and they brought all of their substance to the apostles and laid at their feet. You know what I mean? And then when some people tried to lie to the Holy Spirit, all right, they were killed because they lied to the Holy Spirit. It was all yours anyhow. All right? And, and so God still believes in sowing and reaping. Let me tell you why. Because I've proven it. You can't tell me nothing about that because I know it works. I don't care what you say. I've proven it and I know it works and I'll continue to do it because why? That is God's way to come against economic hardship. And against what I call this recession or plague or pandemic or whatever it is, it is your way for the kingdom of God to open the door over you to be blessed. This was done from King Melchizedek when Abraham began to tie to him one tent. He was the king that lives forever. He was the king of Jerusalem or the king of peace or the Lord of peace. If you don't want to see it, if you don't want to tie, that's up to you. You and God take that up. But as for me and my house, I make no apologies about it. I will continue to tell you about sowing and tithing. I'm not here for popularity. I make no apologies for saying it. You should tithe and you should give it to those who are sowing into your life, who have been a blessing to you, who you've proven over 5, 10, 15 years, being consistent with you, listening to all your prayers, praying for all your children, praying for all your families, listening to all your results, going to warfare against you, taking blows against you, and you still have a problem with sowing. Mighty God, it is something wrong with that narrative. And I'm not knocking no one. But as for me, I'm going to double up on my soul. I'm going to triple up on my soul. Because the Lord knows when you sow. The enemy also knows that when you sow, you break his back. You kill the devouring spirit. You break that spirit. And he doesn't want you to do it. Or if you do it, he wants you to do it peace, peace or piecemeal. That's why a lot of people don't want to acknowledge the power of God in giving. Because giving, right giving into good ground. You know what someone told me yesterday? I went and she said, man, I'm going to have a seed for you. And she said, you know, the Lord been dealing with me to, to give you the seed. I said, well, God bless you. I'll come around and pick it up, you know, you, uh, you know, because some people, if you don't come, they, they spend the seed. So I, I went around and I got it. She said, you know, man, God, I've been believing God for this job because I'm sick and tired of this job. You know, they fight me on the job. The, man, the manager, the manager been trying to sleep with me. This one, the other manager, uh, Gail, Gail's, Gail's a lark. You know, they fight me since, ever since they come in this job. Everybody in here have, com have com combined to fight against me because they know my stance and what I believe in. So I said, Mother God, don't you worry about it. I said, God, I got another job for you and God's going to shift you. She said, Mother God, she said, 10 minutes after you left, I got an interview for another job at a more stable place and a government job. And they called me for the interview. I've gotten a the job. They call her right. She said, Mighty God, just after you left, after you prayed over the seed and left, I've gotten a job. Maybe making 10 times more, maybe more peace and more stable. She got in a government job. Listen, listen, listen to me. 
I don't care how you slice it. I don't care who you listen to. I don't care what you do. That's God's law. I didn't I didn't enact it. I didn't bring this up. I didn't write this thing. It's not Peter Spencer. It is the word of God. Amen. Some of your jobs are on the line because you've been stealing from God in that in that area. And there's nothing wrong with saying, Listen, I messed up in that area. I messed up in that area. Yes, Lord, forgive me. Start me over again. I eat my seed. I, I cannibalize my seed. Unless the seed falls in the ground, it remains. It has to fall. It has to die. And so it can be resurrected in your life as a harvest. It is the truth of the word of God. Many people are going to come up with strange doctrines. Doctrines of demons. Doctrines of the devil. Or those that once preached the word of God, they're going to go now into these new age teachings. All right? Because they heard someone and mentioned it. And now they're following after strange doctrines. And these people are popular. And so because of popular popularity, the Bible says the Bereans search the scriptures. They search the scriptures to see what the thing what Paul was saying is true. All right? They search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. And if I'm saying something wrong, then I stand to be corrected. Amen? Because I don't want to stand in anybody's way of being blessed. Because we're not here to... Now listen, I didn't even touch my phone just now. I didn't touch the phone just now. It switched off. And someone was saying, try to uh, uh, confirm my account. You see, the enemy doesn't like us talking about this. But many people's jobs are because of them not sowing. Alright? Because you're having a warfare. Because you've, you've, not, you've not done the right thing with the Lord. Now, some people have sown and they still have in warfare. Then that's a different matter. That means God is getting ready to test you. God is ready to take you higher. God is using your enemy to promote you. Amen? And this is the same thing that happened with Daniel. But guys, let me tell you something. Don't stop sowing. Don't stop giving. Whether you give to Prophet Spencer or you give to someone else, whoever you find that you call on, you pull on, you, 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 uh, you've, been, you've, been in their, you've been in their teaching, in their, uh, you've been living off it, you've been growing from it, then you have an obligation. You hear me? Because that's like going to a restaurant. And eating the food and saying thank you and leaving. No, you should show thank you. You should show honor. It's just a matter of it's just a mantle of honor. That's all it is, guys. Nobody's asking you and compelling you because you know anybody saying you have to sow you have to sow seven dollars for Psalm seven. You have to sow one hundred fifty dollars for for uh, for Psalm one fifty. No, that's all. I'm not gonna do that. All right. But I will tell you the truth in love. And if you hate me for telling the truth, then you take it up with God. Uh, have I now become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Yes. There's gonna be a, a spirit of itchy earnestness. Where all they want you to do is tell them things that they want to hear. And if they don't, if you don't get it, they go to another prophet. And if you don't hear it, they go to another prophet. And if you don't hear it, they go to another prophet. Because why? They want to hear things to please them. Lord, come, please cover my children, Nadia, uh, Shavantia, Tario, Omar, Brooks, with the blood of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. And so that's all I have to say on that, guys. That's my five cents. But all I'm saying is, don't stop doing it because someone says is when in, when, when in point of fact, they made over 300 million from it before. Yes, God could have said, God could have said, give me the 90% and you take the 10%. But the Lord says, the Lord says, the Lord says, take 10% for me to give to my, my Levites or my servants, all right, for my house. Yes, because the inheritance is the Lord. This is the Lord's inheritance for the Levites or the priests. You know, all prophets, all right, the, the, the inheritance is the portion of the Lord, all right? You bring it into the house, amen? And the rest you use, amen? And so there's a saying, when you want to do something bad enough, you could find it. Some people borrow money to go sow into people's life. They borrow money to go sow a seed. And we say, well, bless God. We recognize someone. I mean, recently they, they sold they sold they sold over fifty, sixty thousand dollars to 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 a particular ministry. We bless God for that. But we said, Lord, you know, we we spoke that word to the person. We spoke the word. We labored with them. We fought with them. We fought for the marriage. We fought for things they were going through. We we restored them. Yet they took sixty, seventy thousand dollars and sold it to another ministry. We don't have no problem with that. But guess what? When it's time for them to call that person or for that person to, to be there for them, they can't find them. They come right back to me. We've seen this happen over and over again and we're still going to minister to you because we believe and we love the Lord with all our heart. We're not here to stop nobody from being blessed. We want to see you blessed. That's why I post the testimonies. That's why I'm always adamant about you doing the right thing. That's why I'm trying to train people and, and write the books so they can actually be self-empowered so they can actually do it themselves. Amen? That's why we do that. That's why we want to see you guys grow to the next level. We, we want to see it. We've seen it. We've seen people grow. We've seen people now who are moving in the prophetic. We've seen people now who are being, who are, who are, who are ministering and, and, and being used by God because, because, because that's what it's all about. We don't want to create, we don't want to create uh, a retarded children or arrested development. We want to see you grow in. But let me tell you something. One of the hardest things for you to do to grow and to, and to move into what you want to is when you don't have the money coming in. When you don't have no money coming in, when you don't have no, no substance or no place to, uh, to make some money or to, to make money through a business or through an idea or through a concept, 
then it is a problem because that's the area the enemy will fight you in. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. And guess where the enemy fights you? He fights you in your health, and he fights you in your what? Your your money. He fights you in your work, your workplace. Amen. He fights you in your uh, tithing and seeding. He fights you with the money where some people say the money can't seem to stay. There's more months than the money. There are some people who say, I make a bunch of money. I make good money. As a matter of fact, my, I make an excellent salary. Yet at the end of the day, I can't see it. It doesn't stay. It takes wings. It flies away. And I want, to, I want you to investigate your life. I want you to look at your life. Sit down uh, with the Lord and say, listen, uh, I want to find out. Um, have I been consistent with my tithing? Have I been stealing from the Lord? Have I been chipping off the end? Have I been obedient to what God says? Have I opened up? Have I opened up any doors in this area? And if you found that you've not done that and everything is okay, you checked out okay, you did a self-examination, then your next step is to say, Lord, am I under spiritual attack? And I'm going to tell you the signs of a spiritual attack. So if you stay tuned, we can see and we can discuss what the spiritual attack are concerning your elevation, your promotion, and your potential for you to elevate. But I want to tell you the truth. God is looking for people who can start businesses. God is looking for people who are going to start businesses and become the employer and become the one who who will who will have, uh, create jobs and create stimulus packages or, or stimulate the economy through their principles of Christian living and following the doctrines and the teachings of the Lord uh, and, and stimulate the economy to give Him glory. Let Him get glory out of your business. Let Him get glory out of out of your venture. Let him get glory out of your entrepreneurship by you having uh, 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 the principles of the Lord. Amen. I've seen people who sold, who even he saved. This man was telling me, and he was bragging about it. He said, I even he saved. He said, but I, I take my money and I just throw it in my church. I give it to the church. He said, and, and listen, he said, I've been so blessed. This man must be, this man must be got just about, uh, I mean, half the, half the, half the uh, commercial uh, properties in Freeport right now. And probably throughout the island. He using our principles. They using the law of attraction. That is our principles, and they're becoming wealthy from it because they're saying the universe. They're saying the universe. They're saying it's God. Amen. That that is simply that is simply a law that's out there anyhow. Amen. Yes, yes. And I'm telling you, it's not new age. It is it is present age. It, it is the present teaching, and it's real. Science is proving what God was saying almost six thousand years ago. It is true. They're using the principles. They're taking God out of it. As a matter of fact, most of these science fiction movies come from the Bible. It comes from the Bible, guys, but they take it, they put their name on it, and they, they, they create it uh, to, to, to reflect the times, right? And they put a twist on it, make millions of dollars, but would not say they got it from the Bible. All of Star Wars, them, all these, all these big time movies, big budget movies, all of them came from the Bible, but they will not tell you that because they don't want to give God the glory. They don't want to give the master the glory. They don't want to glorify the creator, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? Yahweh. Adonai, Elohim. The one who created all this, amen? And so they, they take these laws, use the laws, all right? Use the laws because it's a law. A law is a law. It's simply a law. If you do a certain thing long enough, it will come It will come back to you in whatever measure. What goes out must, must what, 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 what goes in must come out, amen? What goes up must come down. It's a law. This is the law of gravity, the law of physics. But there's also another law that they just discovered now. It's called the quantum ram. The quantum ram is another part of the astral, of the astral law and the astral uh, the astral ram. There are people that will go up there into the astral ram to deal with you, to deal with you for, for you to have problems on your job. Sometimes they have an astral curse on you in the realm of the spirit. And we've been we've been fortunate when we have one-on-one -on -one, uh, delivery session because some people can't come to the Bahamas where we deliver you for free. We don't charge for that. If you come to the Bahamas, come to our service, you get it free. But on our time, when we on our personal time, on our time when we have stuff to do. And you want to do it? There, yes, there is there is a little fee. And many, let me tell you something. People have been talking about how they got delivered, how their life has changed and transformed, how they move to the next level. Let me tell you something, guys. Let me tell you something. When you see God is getting ready to elevate you, the enemy will try to find all kinds of flaw in your game to point you in the wrong way. But guess what? You stay the course. Amen? Stay the course. As a matter of fact, most people... Who are, who've lost their job or are about to lose their job or fighting for their job, it is because it is a mental arena problem. The first level of attack in workplace warfare is the enemy begins to attack your mind. Because the mind gate, as we talked about 
in previous session is the is the area which controls the whole body and so if your mind is messed up concerning your work if you can't think straight if you have vertigo if you have disease if you have symptoms of sickness if you keep hearing you fail you allows you messing up if you keep hearing that you're no good if you keep hearing the boss hates you and don't love you uh you know there's no there's no understanding no more there's no uh, uh camaraderie or fellowship you know now you've been looked at, at you know as, as the problem child uh, and you begin to meditate on this if you do not combat this if you do not be quiet and not not uh, uh not calm yourself down and stay still before the lord the enemy is going to run the enemy is going to run around you yes you got to stay focused you got to stay concentrated don't get out of character don't allow them to fluster you don't let them to get in your head don't let them to, to pull or yank your chain so to speak because they want you to uh to lose your what your center if you lose your center and you begin to fight in your flesh, if you begin to answer that wicked uh, co-worker who always trying to get at you, <laughs> and you answer them in your flesh, you lose. You got to pray for your employers and your employees and those that work with you and those that are co-workers. Amen. Pray for them because ultimately they're the ones that are being used by the adversary. Your battle is not with flesh and blood. Even on your job, it's not your boss. It's not the employees that are coming against you. It is a far more maleficent, wicked, uh, malignant, tumorish, demonic spirit that has been fighting you. Very powerful being is fighting you. You may say, me, little old me, I don't cause no trouble. I, I, I am the easy person to get along, get along with. I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice girl. You know, I help everybody. You know, as a matter of fact, I even, I even offer to work for them on, 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 on my days off. I fill in for them all the time. I always cover in for them. Yet you're being attacked relentlessly why because there is something in you that is irking the enemy and he sees where you're going he sees your threat he sees that you're going to be a force to reckon with in years to come because god is seasoning you god is marinating you god is perfecting you that's why some people have not been released into their ministry right now and they're feeling like god you've left me god what happened no god is he's marinating you he's seasoning you and, 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 I, and I used this illustration yesterday uh, in, a, in a session i said listen if you just take some turkey and throw it in the pot and you, you put some seasoning in and cook it, yeah, it tastes good. You know, you might get a good meal. I said, but if you leave that chicken, that turkey, you season it up, you put all the herbs and spices, you marinate the thing, you massage the thing, you put it in the fridge, leave it for, for an hour or a day or two. When you eat that turkey or that chicken or that steak or whatever it is, it is a totally different level because it took time. Time is what we have to be very careful for. We rush out ahead of God get in trouble then say you know it was it was god's fault or we blame the devil but the devil will take opportunity anyhow sometimes you shouldn't say certain things you said to your co-workers sometimes you shouldn't move uh, the way you move because you move in your flesh god didn't tell you to say nothing god told you to be quiet let him fight this battle you went in your flesh and still uh, send a memo god said don't send a memo don't respond to them with another with another uh, letter don't worry about it this card because i got this you gone in your own flesh send a memo Said something you shouldn't said. They take it, twisted it, and send it back to the to the uh, to the high office, or send it back to the uh, you know to headquarters. And now they've got you for what? For being disruptive. Do, do not play well with others because the enemy baited you. They baited you. Don't let the enemy bait you. Don't let the enemy bait you to say something you can regret because some of them are secretly recording you. Some people call you and they bait you and record you. They block off the side of where they will say all the nasty stuff and they take it to the person and they play the side back where you saying certain things because you respond him to a question that he said there was no guile there was no malice in it all right it was just an opinion that's why you got to say lord season my my speech with salt <laughs> put a guard over my mouth put a guard over my, my eyes in the name of jesus because some people only come to get you to say something so they could use it against you for a future reference many people don't even know they're being friended by people who don't want to show them who they are as a matter of fact some people are sending you requests they put a blank picture there or they put a picture of a tiger or a picture of something else they don't want to tell you who they are but they want to friend you they only have one thing there there's no there's no particular friend and mutual there's no mutual contact but they want to friend you but don't want to tell you who they are that is a suspect right there that is problems right there guys be very careful in the season who you friend because you could be friending the full-fledged full-on satanist you hear me or or a serious witch or someone who does just has no regard for you and passing the information on to your uh those that just hate you don't can't stand you and i uh, and truth be told i prefer you just to hate me if you hate me i don't like you 
I don't like the way you look. I don't like the way you speak. I don't like the way you talk. I don't like your teachings. I just don't like you. And so, good. You know, good. You know, that's how it was back then. We just don't like each other. There's no guy there. Okay, go your way. Stay over here. You know, stay over here. I know. But when the person uses intimacy, uses coolness, uses uh, uh, entrance or access to you to hate on you and then to betray you, that is the worst form of, of what I call deception. You hear me? Because they use your love for them and your... You know, your coolness to breach that and to come there into your world to deceive you, you hear me? And that's what Judas did. You know, Judas felt like he couldn't use Christ no more. They wanted him to set up a kingdom on earth. He was he was secretly a zealot, you know what I mean? He was one of the zealots, all right? And they, they were trying to force the kingdom of God to come. And then they wanted to get out of Roman oppression. And they saw the power that God was working with. So they was working with Judas to try to push God to, to use his power uh, to call 12 legions of angels huh? and to set up an earthly kingdom. But the Lord said, I didn't come for that. I come for the hearts of men. Man. Because let me tell you something. There's a battle being waged right now on an epic level. I even talk about invisible realm. I know there's, there's, there's spiritual battles all around us in the spirit. I'm talking about right in your heart. Right there, there's a war waging in your heart on such a level. You can't even begin to comprehend it. The Bible says the heart of a man is, deceit, is, the, is, is desperately wicked and deceitful. Who could know it? You, you don't know what you've been thinking sometimes until the Lord show you. You don't even know that you had hatred or, or you murder this person. Because you thought you'd forgive them. You thought you you thought that was over until you saw them. Or thought until you heard about their accomplishments. And that same old, you know, wounded spirit or broken heart or hurt or pain rise right back up in you and you feel bile, you feel you feel bitterness, you feel resentment, you feel some sort of way because you've not fully dealt with what was done to you in the past by this individual or your perception of what was done to you. Because a lot of times we only know what is called perception. All right, perception. You could think a person doing something and they don't have nothing to do with it. But because it was twisted in a certain fashion, that's how people get fired because they didn't even know the full story. And the boss went on what this person was saying because it looked legitimate and because they might have felt in some sort of way that you after their position anyhow. And they went for it and did what they did. Then they found out the truth. But because their ego is so big now, their ego is so big, they can't say they're wrong. Let me tell you something. I respect a person to say, please forgive me, I was wrong. All right? And I, the other day I apologized to someone. I said, listen, I was off. You know, I, forgive me, you know. Hey, I was off. You know, I didn't didn't know the full situation, and I might have spoken on a turn. You know, and I said, you know, we squashed this or what? You know, hey, it happens, right? Let's let's be real. No one is perfect. We all can mess up. We all make mistakes, and and there's nothing wrong with that. You you make your mistakes. You 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 you, you deal with it, right? Then you move on, all right? Don't stay in that position. You keep moving with God. But what happens? The enemy wants you to, to dwell on that and to, and to feel like you're never gonna move from point A to point B. Yes, the heart of men. Carry on, says the heart of men. Ye are of God, little children, and I will come them, because greater is he that is in ye, that is in you, than he that is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and I will come them, because greater is he that is in you, than he that is in the world. Who is the he that is in the world? We're talking about the enemy. We're talking about the one who is, goes around as a, as a devouring lion, Seeking whom he may devour. In other words, he's a he's a he's a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. He devours anybody that he that he, that he sees as a weak link. If you're a weak link in the chain, Brother Peter, I feel like a breakthrough is about to happen to me, and the fight down is so intense. That's that's what's happening, woman of God. As a matter of fact, you will get a breakthrough in short order, because because I see it for you. I see it for you. Amen. I see it for you, and it's coming soon. I'm, I'm looking at you, and I see in the realm of the spirit. That the Lord even re reversing everything, even concerning aging. I see you getting younger and younger and younger. There's a glory on you, woman of God. There's a glory on you. Amen? Yes. Yes. And we, we should be, we should say, listen, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Um, hey, you know, let's, let's patch this thing up. Amen? And, and, and I respect a person who say, you know, I messed up, man. You know, or, you know, hey, I was wrong. I didn't know. I didn't get a full picture. You know, yeah, you may feel some sort of way, but you know, hey, listen, the person is extending the olive branch to you, all right? So you, you know, you should reciprocate. Or if you don't, then, you know, hey, listen, at least that person free. They free themselves. You can hold on to that. And it only poisoned in you. That's why a lot of people can't seem to release things because they remember what their former boss did. They remember what the former employees did. They remember what the, uh, the former co-workers did. They remember the evil the people did, you know? And so what happened is they find themselves in that same position where they're fighting. Listen. Guys, let me tell you something. The Lord will take care of his children. I don't care how high a gas go, 
uh, things go shortness of this shortness of that god will cause us to move in the dimension god will supply your needs the world don't understand how god wants us to move amen and they could never understand it because the world will say hoard up everything there's nothing wrong with putting up stuff for you know for whatever occasion may come but don't don't allow don't don't rely on it totally your trust is in the lord the lord will cause heaven to open for you he'll feed you and send man if you have to uh, if you have to God will cause things that you don't even know. There's treasures and there's things. There's supplies. You don't even know where it's at. Many people are trying to figure out how I can pay rent, how I can make ends meet, how I can, you know, how I can pay for my daughter. I have a child going to college. I just want to go to school. You know, Lord, and look what happened. Things going up. It's happening. You know, uh, people say, oh, I, I park my car right now. I can park my car right now. Gas going too high. I heard behemoths saying that they should not even let that word come out of their mouth because they're buying into the narrative of the enemy. Amen? Let me tell you something. We don't even have to get gas from America. We get gas from all through the Caribbean. We get gas from the Latin American countries. It ain't like they have to go up on this gas. Huh? Because we didn't get it from them. What are you talking about? Don't you know God always have a ram and thicket? Don't you know God will, uh, will provide a way for us? Listen. I would wish Dorian on my worst enemy. That's right. I don't worry. I pray for God to make the provisions. And he has. Hasn't he Chantel? Hasn't he Chantel? Hasn't he done that for you? What, what, could, what could change you now? Because you're listening to the media. Right? Listen, people listen to social media so much that they begin to take on, they begin to take on that narrative. Amen. Don't speak those words out of your mouth. Don't come in agreement with that. As a matter of fact, most times when when the world is in a recession, God chooses to bless his saints even more. He causes saints to sign more. Don't you know God? He could speak to lice. Don't you know God could speak to frog? Don't you know God could speak to plague? And they understand him. Yes, a plague. Listen to God. I can't speak lice. I can't speak frog. But God could speak to the frog and send him where he wanted to send him. God can speak to the grasshopper and the locust and send them where he wants to send them. There's his army. He said there's his army. Don't you think he can bless you according to, to uh, Deuteronomy 28? Don't you think God can bless you more so in the time of famine? Huh? Don't you think he'll raise up a deliverer? Don't you think he'll raise up Joseph type? And I see the Lord raising up Joseph types in this season that's coming upon the face of the earth. He's going to raise up Joseph type with, with the ability to, have, to discern dreams, to decipher dreams, and to be able to have ways to put up means for, for whatever time is coming. Amen. God will supply our needs. As a matter of fact, the Lord will open doors, but we have to get in position and find that place where we dwell in the secret place of the Most High. This is time now to get close to God because even your job is not your source. Your job is only your means through which God can bless you. But God can bless you through any means. God can supply your needs through any which way. And I know of guy who's talking for the longest. He said, Prophet Peter, ever since I lost my job, say not. Say, I've been getting treated better than when I had the job. Say, not once our light was turned off. We had more food than when I had money. My, my, we even got a new car. We got this. He said, but I don't have no job. And he said, I have no income. People just was given and sowing into my life. He said, now that I'm back working, he said, he said, stop. <laughs> he said, stop. He said, I mean, I could, you know, I'm supplying our needs. He said, but when God supplies your needs, he said, it is so much abundant that he was given away. You can imagine him nor his wife working, but yet they're being supplied with everything they need. And much more. Now that the job, he got the job called him back, and he said, "Now, he said he making us, he he um, you know, he making the money, but now you know the blessings ain't like how it used to be. But he's able to supply his needs. Amen." There's someone who said, "Wayne, Wayne Williams, very good friend of mine, very very uh, very serious guy in the Word of God. You know, any book I tell him that he gets, I recommend getting all of Prophet Spencer's book worth the read. Someone just said, powerful. Amen. Of course." All right, we don't try to be we don't try to be uh, something we're not doing. We practice what we preach. We ain't just telling you get this stuff and we ain't doing it. This is something we talked about. I live this. I've been through this, and I'm telling you about workplace warfare. I know about it. I know about when people set you up to, to fail. I know about when people sabotage you. I know when people uh, 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 tell you you got the position and give it to someone else. I know when people tell you, boy, look here, they laughing at you because they oh you know uh, uh, boy the boss will see you. They laughing. The boss will see you, and they laughing. And you, you look at them, you can see they know this boy boss will see you. And they they know that you're getting ready to get your letter. Huh? Because they already set it up. Huh? They already had a discussion on you. But to God be the glory. Amen? God will still lift you up. God will still supply you. As a matter of fact, I couldn't get the memo. Every job I went on, they fired me. Every job I went on, they either fired me or I lost the job. And I was like, Lord, why is this happening? You know, am I cursed? Or am I care to curse on me? Why is this always happening? Every time I go to a job, it's almost like it goes good for a couple of months, and then all of a sudden they either close down or they let me go. What is wrong with me? And I try to be the best employee I could, try to come on time, do whatever I do. And the Lord was trying to show me, I want you as a businessman. I want you to be a businessman. And I finally got the memo. 
and then I started to do the little spraying and the little stuff and then you know I was able to buy a car then from there I was able to do some stuff and you know get the company going and then at one point in time at, at, at the height of the company I had close to 50 em employees right yeah that's from starting from scratch I mean literally walking with my back my backpack and my tank in there and catch the bus to go spray and then catch the bus back again and then you know uh, catch the bus catch the taxi down to uh, to pay one to do a spray back in the day right they have to take the same money that they make from uh, the job to pay the cab fee back up to Freeport all right Bonds Gilbert yes my favorite exterminator praise God and you know I see God I see God just doing something with Bonds uh, in the season in terms of her food and in terms of the stuff she's doing now listen, I tell you, boy, look at God, you open some major doors. Keep cooking. Keep that cooking coming. Keep that cooking coming. And then, all of you who are cooking business, I want you to pray over your food every day. I want you to bless your food. Bless the kitchen. Bless the office. And then, bless whatever you're doing that works in your hand. Because some people want your, your food to taste stale, taste funny, because they they, they mutter enchantments and, and incantations all right, against your food. All right? So, people will be turned off from the food. People wouldn't want the food. Amen? You know, you have people line up to, to get your food. And now it's like they had to come around to get your food, huh? And the food is so good. But they want your food to, when they taste it, it tastes stable, it tastes stale, it tastes funny, it tastes weird. Uh, you know, then all of a sudden, you know, uh, you, 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 you see what happened to their food? Something off of the food, right? Oh, yeah, me too. I bought the food. I did And blah, blah, blah. See, that's how the enemy wants to create a narrative to try to create people uh, 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 where they create a little click. So they, they start to tell people, don't go around this place. It's a lie from the devil. Because the enemy doesn't want to see you eating. And so he'll he'll do that to you. Yeah, man. This woman, she was wondering why she wonder why her restaurant wasn't making no money. But she'd hired a girl. But she didn't know the girl was the girl was in a coven. The girl was in a coven. And so um the food was obviously very good, but all of a sudden people start complaining. But the food is fresh. They say the food tastes like it's a week old. Right? But she cooked the food every day. And she's a hub the cook. The lady was cooking the food for her and cleaning, right? And then one day, one of the customers say, you know, we know you, and we know, we know you, you know, you know, we know you, because we've been here a long time, but why is the food tasting like that? She tasted the food, and truth be told, the food was sour. And only till she questioned the girl, and they they, they, they threatened to, to, to beat her, they threatened to take her to court, then she explained exactly what she's doing. She literally was making the woman's food sour and taste stale, because she was sent by the coven to shut the woman down. Yes, my God, I have been applying for social work position since I graduated and cannot get through. They always tell me that I need at least three years experience in the field. I have now more than three years. Wow, that's Cammy Camps. And Cammy Camps, you know what God has done for you already. Right? Yes, yes, there's been some warfare, but you see how God restore you. Right? They wanted to take things away, but God restore you. God even give you upgrade. God will bless you with another vehicle. Yes, there's some fights, but the, what, what I'm seeing right now is that they don't want Cammy Camps to move in the thing that she wants to do most of all. And that's where the fight comes in. You ever try to pray sometimes on a certain thing? You ever try to say, God, I can, I can take 50 minutes to pray. You find that you can't even pray for two minutes. All of a sudden, you start praying. Mind, listen. Your mind wander. Then you put, you pick up your social media device. You start surfing. Surfing. So when you look again, you surf for three hours. You can't pray for two minutes. What's wrong with that? That means you're being resisted because your prayer is where your breakthrough is. That means that something is fighting you because it doesn't want to see you. Elevate because your prayer is going to open the portal and the door for you to move into the dimension which God called you to move into. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I release the fire of God to flow right now like never before into the people of God's life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I release the fire of God to flow. I release the fire of God to flow right now. Some of you, you've been trying to do your, you know, do things and you know, finish books and complete books and all of a sudden you start getting migraines. All of a sudden, you turn off from the book. All of a sudden, you turn off from the project. You don't even desire to do it no more. All of a sudden, you have warfare like never before. You have crazy warfare. Why? Because you're trying to do something for God. They know that it's going to bless people. They know that 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 this this thing is going to also free you as well. Because there's something about confidence in achieving a goal. Once you achieve a goal or you achieve a certain uh, you know objective, you become empowered. You know you could do it because you've done it before. You know you could move to another level. And so what happens is the enemy wants you to have a, have, your, have a picture of failure so it can imprint it on your mind. So if you keep failing, keep falling, keep failing, and you have that register in your mind, what's going to happen is you're going to need deliverance because that means your, your, your mind is by default is set on failure. By default. It's a default setting. So anytime it goes right back from you being positive, it goes right, right back to what? Failure. Default setting. Because the enemy has created that in your mind. That's why he's so busy harming you as a child. That's so busy. That's why he's so busy causing you to have problems 
uh, as a baby, you know, poisoning, falling down, sick all the time, you know, uh, uh, problems learning, mental problems, mind battles, you know, all the siblings taking advantage of you, you know, this happening, bullies beating you up, all kinds of wonderful, uh, uh, horrible things happening to you, and yet you, you, you keep your hand, you have a wonderful destiny. Why do you think the enemy spent all this time trying to damage your soul, trying to damage your soul, and yes, I said soul, your soul comprised of your will, emotion, intellect, your rational faculties. They could be damaged, it could be wounded, it could be um, traumatized to the point where you live in a life in a hermit shell. You live in like a hermit crab. You basically live in, in a life of going in reverse. Everything you touch goes backwards. Everything you do is rejected. You've been rejected, this has been rejected. You know, your work is being rejected. You have a spirit of rejection. People turn on you. You know, your workforce turn on you. Let's go tell me, say, every time I get a job, Within three months, they either fire me or the whole workforce turn on me. And I've not heard one person say that. I've heard hundreds, maybe even thousands of people complain about the same thing. What is that? Why are they hating you for nothing? Why is that, why is that every after three or four months, they start to hate you? Why? Let me read something. Micah 7. Trust you not in friends, but put your confidence in no guide. Keep the doors of your mouth from her that lied in thy bosoms. Keep your mouth from her that lied in your bosom. Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus says the Lord, Cursed be man that trusted in man, and make it flesh his arms, and whose heart departed from the Lord. When you trust in man, but I trust in the Lord, when you trust in that job, when you trust in that, that, uh, that system, or that boss, to supply all your needs, then that does, does become your God. All right? Trust in God. Yes, God, using that person. Even when they sold your life, God using the person. It's God who doing that through them. God touched your heart to sow. Amen? And so they sold or they gave to you or they opened the door for you. It's because God told them to do it. All right? Now you thank God for it. You thank them for it. Yes. But you thank God when you get private. You say, thank you, Lord. I know it's you who used that. Because God ain't coming down from heaven. I mean, not now. So he had to work through people. Many people have been told to bless you, but they did not listen to the Lord. So the Lord had to raise someone else up to give it to you. Because they heard the Lord, but they hardened their heart because they desired to be disobedient. Amen? And they heard the Lord. They pretend like they're here, and they, they, they go on their own way like Jonah. Amen? But God told them to be blessed to you. God told them to open doors to you. God told them to stop praying funny prayers against you too. Some people are praying funny prayers against you, and they don't even know that they've entered into the, they've entered into the realm of their cult because they're praying against you. Don't recognize that it's a manipulation prayer. They've entered into the realm of Jezebel and they don't even understand that their prayers are causing all your problems. It's Christian cursing. And they think they're praying the will of God, but what they're actually doing is they're praying the will of Satan. Please pray for my son, Amir, man of God, who's been going through these same negative experiences. But God showed me that he's great, but the enemy's trying to break him down. We right now cover uh, Amir right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We curse the mind battles. We curse everything against his destiny and release the full potential that God, is, that God has ordained for him. God from the foundation of the world that which Christ died for, he will reach his full potential. But he'll reach it in Christ Jesus. Amen. He'll reach it in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I see Dr. Sandra G. Smith is on the line. God bless you, woman of God. She's telling like it is. Love her to death. Oh no, sorry, excuse me. I love her to life in the name of Jesus. That's the same. Forgive me, woman of God. I love you to life. <laughs> I gotta get rid of these saying sometimes because they say it so much. I want to tell you right now that all of those that try to hate on you. Don't understand that God is getting ready to supernaturally promote you. I see supernatural promotion for Dr. Sandra. God is going to promote her against her haters because there are some people that really, really should have stand with the woman of God but didn't stand with the Lord like they should have. They should have stand with the woman of God. God told God told them to be a blessing and to be, to be her armor bearers and to help this woman of God, but they turned around and they fled. And, and the woman of God labored for them. The woman of God prayed for them. The woman of God, the woman of God was there for them. As a matter of fact, uh, as a matter of fact, they bring her all the hard problems uh, and all the all the terrible cases, and then and then run to their pastors them and sow the seed to their pastors them and didn't sow to the woman of God like they should. They brought her all the hard cases. They brought her all the all the all the cases that 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 that, that even even the devil run from. And the woman of God prayed with them and stood in the gap and did things for them. And they turned around when 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 they got when they got delivered and set free. And they went their way and ran away from the woman of God without sowing and blessing the woman of God. But God says, God says, I'm going to bless you anyhow. I'm going to, I'm going to establish you anyhow. And God says, I'm going to do it anyhow. And God says, I'm going to raise up sons and daughters into your ministry like never before. God says, I'm going to bring supernatural healing 
Yes, they tried to stop you. Yes, they tried to throw the witchcraft at the, at, at the door. Yes, they tried all that foolishness. But the Lord kept you. The Lord continued to keep you, uh, Dr. Sandra. Amen. And the Lord says in this season, he's going to He's gonna save your whole household. Mighty God. He's going to save your whole household. And the Lord said, you don't see nothing yet. The latter shall be uh, greater than the former. You, you get ready to enter the final season of your life. God says, in the midst of what's happening, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to use you as a hand to many. Amen. I'm going to use you as a hand and as a hub to many. I'm going to use you as a hand and a hub to many. In the season, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Mighty God. I told a gentleman in the last live, I said, God is going to restore you. Everything was stolen. I said, God is protecting you. I said, God is going to, God is going to protect you from this accident. Mind you, I in, I in the Bahamas. The man, the man, the man in Texas. <laughs> the man just emailed me, I think, two two weeks ago, maybe a week ago. Oh, there about. And he says, man of God, same thing happened. So sad. I flip over my car. <laughs> the enemy the enemy wanted to kill me, but I remembered the prayers. I remembered the word that went forth. Mighty God. And I and, and God preserved my life. Mighty God. See, the, the Lord will show you a month ahead of time what's happening. 10 months, 15 months, a year, two years, three years. To let you know that this thing is coming, but I've already taken care of it. Amen. I've got you. And I'll, I'll let my prophet know to speak it into your life so you can be prepared. So when this thing does manifest, know that I've already went ahead of you. And I've taken care of it. Amen. And so God will take care of you. He'll let you know. That doesn't mean the enemy in the fight. Yes, the enemy still try to bring the word to pass to try to kill this man. Mighty God. But the Lord preserved him. And the car flipped and flipped. He said, the car's total. But the Lord preserved him. Amen. God will preserve you too. God will preserve you too. And He's preserving you too. He's preserving all of you that are listening under the sound of my voice. God is preserving you. And guess what? God says, I'm promoting you. I'm promoting you. Those of you, I want you to be real with me. Say, Prophet, that's me. Every time I go on a job, I work for three to six months, and all of a sudden the people run me, or I get an argument, or they fire me, or I walk off the job. If that's you, be real, because we can pray for you right now. If that is you, I want you to be real with God, real with, 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 uh, with me. And God's going to set you free. Amen? But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. And he did not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. That's why the Lord didn't commit his ways to man. He committed his ways to the Father. He didn't trust in the arm of flesh. That's why the Lord used to wake up early in the morning. You know, at 12 midnight, the Lord used to leave and go into the mountains or into the hills. And then he'd come back down maybe 6 o'clock in the morning because he was recharging himself. And preparing himself for the day and getting advice and getting counsel and getting direction because he says, I only do what I see the Father doing. And that's the way we got to live in this season. We got to literally be living uh, uh, in that place where we walk in with God in such a deep dimension that we only see and do what the Father does. Because that's going to keep us and preserve us for what's coming upon the face of the earth, mighty God. Because there's something coming on the face of the earth. There's going to be another level they're releasing. I see something else coming. They're going to release in the atmosphere. I don't want to be the bearer of bad tidings, but they're releasing something else, mighty God. And this thing, it can come like with sores. It can create sores in people, mighty God. Yes, man of God. Look at the dream I had with my deceased relatives and the big black frog being brought into my house. And I was able to pray against it. The end result hurt the one who came against me instead. Yes, you're right, woman of God. You're right. You're right. You're right. Now, Yvonne Miller saying that she'd been on the job for 25 years and had no promotion. Well, I bind that. I bind that. I bind that demon. And woman of God, I know they've tried to keep you down because at one point in time, you used to see snakes around your office. You used to see snakes around the chair, snakes around the office uh, the, the office desk. There was, a there was a snake sent to keep you down. As a matter of fact, I told a woman recently, I said, woman of God, there's a snake in your yard. I, I went to do an extermination job. I went to exterminate, but I also went to pray. Because when I'm exterminating, I'm praying. And I'm discerning what's in your yard, what's in your house. And I told the woman of God, I said, listen, woman of God, there's a snake that's been trying to stop you from moving. Uh, it's going to call, it's something like monkey pox, woman of God. It's something like monkey pox. Like a monkey pox, but this thing is going to be, we got to pray. We can pray, we can stop it, we can minimize it. But the saints got to pray. Amen? The saints got to pray. There's something they're trying to plan again. This thing is created in the lab again. This is in the lab. Okay, this is from the lab. And it's something like a monkey pox. Or it comes from a monkey. And I told her, listen, there's a snake in your yard. And the woman of God said, man of God, you know, I, I saw one in a dream, you know. So I know what you're saying is true. But I've never seen a snake physically in this yard. And I said, this snake has been sent to stop you from working. The snake wants to create hard, hardship. The snake wants to bind you up. The snake wants to create mind battles and warfare. The snake wants you to be depressed and stay down and just, just, you know, just be depressed and keep you going around 
in a revolving door of no success. Well, the woman of God called me last week, hollering and screaming, saying, Prophet, Prophet, let me tell you something. You have a voicemail. Say, I saw the biggest snake in my yard last week. I heard the dog hollering and screaming, and, and this was, you know, unlike him. And so I went to the washroom to look, and there it was, was the most, uh, a big black foul snake, all right? Big black foul snake. Hideous looking thing, all right? And, and say, when it's something, it's scoot, it's scoot. It's like it disappeared, like it, I wasn't even real. I said, woman of God, that is what's been trying to keep you down. I'm telling you, I said, I was anointing a yard. I prayed in a yard. I prayed in a yard, and now the thing manifested itself uh, uh, two weeks later. And hold on, I got another message. About a week later, she says, as she was going about her day to a, to a business location, guess what? As she was stepping into the place, another snake was right there. Another snake was there, mighty God. How is it that you leave, must see, 10 miles away? You saw the snake in your yard. Now how come there's another snake going into the place where you're going? And apparently she was going to do something that will help her facilitate getting a job. This thing doesn't want her to work. This thing has been assigned as the guardian to keep her down. This thing has been assigned to cause joblessness and the cause of the fight in her. Her mind and the fight in her thoughts and to feel like she's no, she's of no good and she's... You know, she isn't going to go anywhere. It's a lie from the devil. But they're guarding her, monitoring her. That's no doubt. I told her, that's someone who's watching you through the eyes of that snake. I know it sounds weird. and I know you guys don't want to hear it. But let me tell you something. We didn't invent this. We came into this warfare. We didn't invent wickedness. They're doing it. They're getting more bold. Don't you see how the people recently make two people who they found was putting charms on people's property to make them sick? And then they was calling them and saying, listen, come to this man. He can free you. They was going around at nighttime putting charms on the people's property. And the people were getting sick. And they would say, okay, we know a man who would help you. And so they would, they would, they would, they would, they would uh, call the man to come and help them and, and to, remove, to remove whatever curse was on them and to remove the sickness until they found out what they were doing. They made them eat the charm. They set them down the whole village, sit them down in a circle and make them eat the evil charm. I pray that whoever is trying to keep you down, whoever is trying to keep you sick, whoever is trying to bind you up, I decree and declare they will eat the evil charm. They will eat their charms. They'll eat the thing they put in your yard. They'll eat the thing they put around your body. They'll eat the thing they put on your doorstep. They'll eat the thing they did in your dream. Some people have dream charms where they come and they pollute you in the dream realm. And so you see that you're going backwards instead of going forwards. You see you're being fought. You're seeing strangers come in your dream. And they're, they're, they're asking you to do certain things to you. You see you hanging over people you don't even know. These are people that they sent against you to cause you to have an evil charm in your life to operate in the physical plane. And so once you begin to operate like that, you'll find that your life becomes hell, all right, because you think it's just a dream and didn't cancel it and didn't bind it up or didn't wage warfare. Yes, and this is exactly what happened. They, they, it right, on, it right on Facebook, if you go and look at it, you'll see it. They make them eat the charms. They make them eat all the wickedness they're doing. I decree and declare, may your adversaries eat all of their wickedness that they've been doing against you. May they eat the thing that they've been doing against you in the name of Jesus because they need to eat them charms. Yes, they make them eat it. They watch them eat it. They watch them eat the charm. They, the whole village. And they had these sticks. They had, they had sticks like how you know he's beat horse and, and cane. They was beating them. <laughs> they was whop, whop, eat it. Eat it. I mean, they had they had a whole group surrounding them. They surround them in, you know, and log them in. And they sit on the ground and they eating their charms. They literally eating their charms. The very charm that was fighting them, the very thing that was used to destroy and kill some of these people, so they could call in this man, and the man sending them out, you know, he's sending them out to go put the charms down. Three or four of them was working together, putting the charms on people places at night time, so you could get sick or disease or problems, and he'll come and move it away for a fee, for a fee, and, and then they'll move it away. They create the problems, it's like a, di a Hegelian dialectic. They create a problem, then they present a the solution. And they get your reaction, then they present the solution. They're the ones who created it in the first place. But it's all about control. And so he'll continue to do that. But God exposed them in the season. God exposed them in the season. God will expose all those that have been doing this in secret. Now, I want to tell you guys right now. Someone right now, you're dealing with stomach problems. You have an ulcerated problem. Like you've been having tremendous pain in your stomach for no reason. All of a sudden, there's bloating and gas. Like you have gas in your stomach. Mighty God. And, and also, you feel... You feel like sometimes your leg's about to give out. You, you feel like your leg is about to give out. Amen. Amen. I agree with Rich, uh, uh, Denise Richardson. Let the wicked eat their own flesh and drink their own blood. A sweet wine too. Yes. Amen. 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 There's someone right now, you've been going through bloating. Bloating. 
you feel bloated, and sometimes you have gas that doesn't want to pass out. Someone you're dealing with constipation. Someone right now you're dealing with constipation, serious constipation. It's like you sit on the toilet for hours, nothing comes out. You know, you've been going through this thing for the longest time. I rebuke that situation right now because God is healing you from that. Uh, someone says, that's me, man of God. Someone, see, that's your honesty. And because of the woman of God, God is losing your bowels right now. God's healing you in the name of Jesus. God's healing you in the name of Jesus. There's someone you've been dealing with chronic back pain, uh, back pain issues. Chronic back pain issues. You've been dealing with chronic back pain issues. The enemy been trying to make you feel like you're going to be paralyzed. As a matter of fact, uh, someone else says, Prophet, be gas. Uh, me, Prophet, gas and stomach. I lose you from this assignment, devil, from uh, uh, Michelle Hussein, as well as Adassa. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit that has been fighting you. I command you to come up and out of them. Up and out. Up and out. I break your power right now. I break your grip right now. I command you gas, stomach pain. I command you gas, bloating. Come out, come out, come out, come out, come out, come out. I decree you will lose them now. Anything that's attached to them, anything that's attached to them, anything that's attached to them, I cancel it right now. I see like a hand attached to uh, Michelle Hussein. I see like an evil looking hand that's been trying to create that in you. I cut the hand of the spirit. I pull that hand out and I destroy it under your unction and anointing of God. I rip it apart in the name of Jesus Christ of Nerud. I break his grip right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I rip it up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nerud. I cancel it over your life right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nerud. Chronic, chronic uh, back pain and neck pain says another. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, acid reflux, man of God says another. I bring the anointing and the power of God into this atmosphere. I lose King Jesus into this service and into this teaching right now to meet them at the point of their, of their need. Chronic back pain, acid reflux. I command you to go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree complete healing and deliverance. I bind up these evil forces. I bind up those things that were sent against them. I command this disease to go and loose the people of God right now. Some of you have been having mind battles, tremendous mind battles. As a matter of fact, you're wondering if, if you can go insane one day. Sometimes you feel like running, you feel like stripping naked and running out your clothes. You hear a voice telling you, you might as well run your car into this wall. Sometimes you feel like slapping someone, just walking up to them and slapping them for no reason. You've been getting angry. All right, Veronica says, pain in foot. I speak healing to you right now. Back pain, high blood pressure says another. That's coming from Gurley. Uh, uh, pain wakes me up at night time, mighty God. Back pain and neck pain says Avril. Uh, pray for my stomach also. That's coming from Raquel right now. I, I command and bring everyone who's been honest. God, you see the honesty. Now because of the honesty and because of their forthright and forthcoming, I ask that you will heal them supernaturally, Lord. And right now, some of you can pass wind. Some of you can pass gas. Some of you want to go to the toilet right now. Mighty God, I've been having back pain and horrible pain in my right leg. The doctor says sciatic pain. I cancel that sciatic pain, back pain, horrible pain in the right leg. I cancel that right now. If you have some oil, please anoint those areas right now as a point of contact, as I'm, in, as I'm under this unction, as I'm under this anointing, as I, I'm under this fire. The fire of God is releasing healing to you right now. I decree they will burn up some of you. They're going to burn up some of you. You're going to feel a little discomfort for season. And you're going to pass. There are going to be a pass. There are going to be a pass. There are going to be a pass. And you, you're going to find this thing coming out. Some of you are going to vomit later. Some of you are going to dream of, of something coming out of you. Some of you are going to dream of something leaving you. You'll find something saying bye-bye. That is the force that's been fighting you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree right now that any shrine that's connected to your destiny... Yes, the evil shrine that's connected to your destiny. I shut it down in the realm of the spirit. I shut it down over your life, mighty God. Right now, God says, I'm, I'm releasing I'm releasing the heavenly bailiffs to go into the realm of the spirit and to create, to create blessings and healing. Pain in my right foot, shoulder, arm. Please pray for me, prophet. This is coming from another. I release the healing power of God to flow to your shoulder, right foot, and your back, woman of God, and to bring healing to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command that spirit that's attached to you, the spirit of pain and dis-ease, yes, and discomfort that has been walking with you, 
mighty God, even your kidneys, even your kidneys. I see the devil been sticking his hand in some of your kidneys. I see two evil arrows shot at somebody's kidneys, and your kidneys has been acting weird. You've been finding yourself going to the bathroom three, four times a night. Then another person, you find yourself going to the bathroom, but you cannot pee. I cancel that, that problem right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I have multiple MRIs scheduled this coming week because of neck and back pain and shoulder pain. Woman of God, I wish you could come to our service. You hear me? Whenever you get the chance, whenever we have a service, I want you to coordinate. You come to our service. You come to the service. You hear me? This is no charge. This is free. If you could get here, we're going we're gonna to minister to you and pray with you under the anointing. And we're going to break this thing. Amen. We break someone dealing with prostate right now. You've been dealing with prostate cancer. We prayed for a lady and she said, Prophet, Prophet, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Hey, say, they had me at, I think, I don't know. She said she was an advanced stage of cancer in the breast. And now she's healed. Amen. Someone with prostate cancer, they heal. They're delivered. Amen. Because it's not me. I'm just a paper boy. I'm just a delivery boy. There ain't nothing Peter can do. Peter can't do nothing. Peter have no strength in him. It's the power of Almighty God. Amen. And we don't take no credit. We don't take no glory for it. We just thank God that he, he even knows our name. We thank God just to be used, even as a, as a room sweeper in the kingdom of God, in the house of the Lord. We don't mind. I don't care about this. I just want to see people get set free and deliver. That's why I have a problem with people who criticize so much. But you know, the enemy will raise up people to always find something wrong. They'll always find something wrong because they got to find something to do. And just like they did with Daniel, they'll find a way to try to paint you in an ugly position instead of praying for you, instead of lifting you up because they don't know that men of God sometimes are more attacked than the average person because they're setting people free. They're the shepherds because if you if you attack the shepherd, the flock will free. All right? The, 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 uh, if you attack the shepherd, the flocks will free. They'll flee. And so sometimes you got to keep your prophet or your pastor or whoever whoever you're under. And yes, there's something called a covering. I don't care what you say. There is a covering. There is a covering. Amen? Not in the sense that you entitle them. It's just that they pray for you more than anybody else. You call them more than, more than anybody else. Okay, so Shelly says she's going to come for the next service whenever we announce it. Uh, and so a lot of you come because we don't know when we got the next one. But when we do, I need you to come. I need you just to come because we're going to be moving in a heavy healing anointing. Yes, we can, yes, we can minister, but more so a healing. All right? Healing. You are his blessed vessel, Prophet Peter. I would love to be to love to be his blessed vessel too. Yes, you are, woman of God. Yes, you are. There's a tremendous anointing upon your life. And you've been seen from a child. You've been seen from a child, but sometimes we get scared. We tell God, take the gift away. Or, you know, we, we, we tell people that they say, You're supposed to be saying that. And so we tell God, take it. And God moves it. But God is going to recalibrate and recrank it up. All right? So, you know, many of us who see from God like crazy as children. But after a while, you know, we said it's too much and we tell God, take it away from us. And so God took the gift, the, the gift away from us out of graciousness, all right? But now we're praying back for it. We want it back and God God will give it to you if you really see you want it. Not to be a show-off, not, not to be braggadocious, not to say, look at me, prophet wonderful, look at what I can do. It is for the body. It is for those you're going to meet, for those you're going to come and attack with. That's why he puts you through, 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 uh, through so much uh, uh, testing and trials because you're going to have a lot of people in your hands. And if your ego is too big and your pride is too high, then you could get into self and you could become a danger to to uh, to the people who you're ministering to, to yourself. And you could create so much uh, division and hatred in the body of Christ. But God calls us to gather, not scatter. Amen? God calls us to, ga to gather, but not, not scatter. Well, the Lord will do this thing. She says, I was, yeah, hallelujah, I was scared. Yes, yes. And that's okay because, listen, people at this age right now, <laughs> They see things and they're afraid. They're afraid because, let me tell you something. Many people say, I want to see in the Spirit. I want to see in the Spirit. If the Lord will open your eyes to the Spirit, you'll see what's in front of you sometime. You will say, God, this ain't real. Take it away from me. Because you will see things with nine heads. You will see demons that that, 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 that look like an alligator cross with a fox, uh, you know, with a hyena, and, 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 and 10 feet tall, 15 feet tall. Some of them have sword in their hands. Some of them look, they look like humans, but when you look down, they have the body of a wolf. Right? Some of them have body of a snake, of, of a mermaid. Some of them have wings attached to them. Right? And they look hideous. And you say, God, open my eyes to see it. Let God let you see that. And they're all around us. I don't care what you say. They're all around you even right now. The anointing on a, on, on a real prophet is real from God. And some are jealous. They can't do what they do. This is very powerful. This is coming from Carrie Ann from Jamaica. And Carrie Ann hit the nail right on the head. Because the, there's always the counterfeit. And there's always the real, all right? 
yes, the conflict could be accurate, actually accurate. They can be very accurate because they're getting it from the actual ram. They get it from a, from a familiar spirit who's around you all day, but they cannot they cannot speak into your life, and they can't, they cannot give you the revelation of God, and they cannot elevate your life. They can tell you what is happening, but they cannot take your life to another level. Let me let me tell you what I'm saying by that. In a way, they can see, they are seeing. Okay, I'm, that's right, that's correct, but they cannot elevate your life. They cannot speak into your life to shift you. They cannot shift your life into the atmosphere. Where God wants to take you because they don't have the power. They don't have the relationship with God. All right? They don't have the relationship with God. What they can do is they can open up curses of your life because they're seers. All right? And then you give them the money. And you let them touch you. You let them pray over you. And so you wonder why some of you are going through workplace warfare. Because you went to a service and let someone who, 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 was, who, was, who was a divination prophet or was a, a, a prophet of the enemy or dark prophet or who once had the anointing on him but lost the call. Yes, you can lose the call. The call can get uh, contaminated and polluted. We've seen it all through the Bible. They've lost their call. Even the guy who God told to go and talk to the king, and then he said, run another way, and do not, do not, do not talk to nobody. And he did the same thing. The king reached his hand to touch him, and the king had to travel up. All right? You see the power of God. And God said, now when you finish, run, and go a different way. He let another prophet, who was an older prophet, probably, who don't hear from God no more, who probably jealous, he heard about him. And this is another thing with workplace warfare. Because a prophet job is a work. That's working. You're working. I don't care what you say. A prophet is a, is, a, is a workman for God. He's in the field. He's in the vineyard. Yes. And so that was his job, to go and do what he had to do. He was working for the most high God. All right? And God told him, so listen, when you do that, when you say what you have to do, run. Run and go to, go a different way. He heard from his son. The old prophet heard from his son that there's a prophet here and he's doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing. Now this old prophet probably backslidden, probably got another will of God, probably compromised, probably got too comfortable with the king, can't tell him nothing because he's eating and drinking with him, all right? So you get you get comfortable. That's why prophets usually live a lone life, because they can't get too comfortable with everybody because when it's time for them to switch, a prophet can be laughing and talking with you and then God will switch him on and he tell you exactly what you need to do to stop doing what you're doing. And, and so that's not popular, all right? They kill the prophets, as a matter of fact. They kill the prophets. They pull them apart. They rip them apart. So God had to take some of them early because they didn't appreciate the prophets, all right? So he, so he, so the prophet, the old prophet went to him and said, listen, an angel told me to tell you, come with me. I'm a prophet too. Huh? Well, why did God didn't use him? Why God didn't send a prophet from another country to come and talk to him? Why? Because, because this guy's been polluted, compromised, all right? He, was out, he, he wasn't with God no more. And so he become what? A, 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 a prophetic husband, all right? Yes, yes. People can become prophetic husband if they don't keep the oil fresh, if they let too many people pull on them, the wrong people pull on them. If they don't, they don't guard the anointing. If they don't refresh themselves, they begin to open themselves up to other spirits. Yes, they still have a gift; they're still ministering, but there's something missing. And if you don't spend time with God, Hallelujah! If you don't spend time with God, spend time in a secret place. Listen, there are so much demons after a prophet you can't even imagine. One of the number one prophets, number one of the number one things the prophet battled with is depression. Why? Because it's a mind thing. They're always having Jezebelic people, Jezebelic pastors, Jezebelic uh, jealous people. Uh, to come after them and speak against them and to try to turn people off from them and people who once were with them will turn on them. So this uh, prophets have to be constantly covered and 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 you know and always on guard because because you could be praying with a person, minister to them, and the Lord say, you know what, the person you minister to, they're deep in the witchcraft and they only come for you to take the thing off them. And you say, Lord, why you didn't show me all of that? Because the Lord wants you to be so sharp that you know it. Amen. Now some people say you just don't touch, don't touch them because. He let you know that they're planning what they're planning to do. They cannot steal your anointing, but they can suck it to the point where it's just on. You ain't got nothing. You can't even, you can't even see no more because they don't suck everything out of you. Let me tell you something with a prophetic anointing. You can start with here, full glass, and you prophesy and you speak it and you speak it and you minister it and you minister it and you minister it. And slowly but surely, listen, you still go it because you want a prophetic high. But the slowly but surely, the glass is being drained. The anointing, the anointing. Is it could be sucked and pulled out of you. Virtue could come out of you, and you don't even know that. But yet you're still operating at that level. You're still casting out devils. You're still ministering. You're still going. You're still talking to 50, 60 people and tell them what that says the Lord. Don't know that all of a sudden your level is dropping, but you can't feel it yet because you want that runner's high, or what we call the adrenaline phase. All right. But by the time you 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 recognize, you say, Jesus, I feel like a trump rock on my head. I want to sleep for five days. Why? I can't even get up. That's because the anointing that was on you to do that thing. 
was there for you, but you spend the anointing on all the wrong things. And so what happened is your anointing drain, 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 drain. So what happened is you enter into that place where the enemy now begins to infiltrate your mind and will and emotions and begin to feed you things. So a familiar spirit that's watching all along now begins to whisper to you and you think it's God. And because it's a similar type of spirit, it, is, it, it leads you and guides you. And so now you find that you've taken a step into sorcery and divination and don't even know it. And so the anointing becomes polluted and contaminated and you don't even recognize how it happened and all of a sudden a demon now begins to oppress you a demon now begins to suppress you a demon now begins to depress you then all of a sudden all of a sudden it goes to the place where the demon compresses you what do i mean by compress what do i mean by compression or compresses you well after he suppresses you oppress you depress you demonizes you he then begins to compress you that means he begins to lock you in or isolate you to the point where you feel compressed you feel like you're not moving so you look for extra biblical things to find ways to enter into that realm because the realm that was open to you is now closed because now you are too weak you are too tired you can't seem to ascend like how you're supposed to ascend into the realms and so you begin to what you begin to uh, entertain strange voices that are not God's voice and you begin to uh, entertain strange demonic entities that are prophetic in nature hallelujah you begin to dine at Jezebel's table not even knowing you dining at Jezebel's table and this is what happens that's why you got to stay in a secret place that's why you got to continue to pray that's why you got to get refreshing look 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 what Elijah said Elijah said take my life because because you know I'm the only one zealous for you uh, you know, uh, everybody else dead, everybody else they, everybody's gone. All, I only saw you. The Lord says, catch yourself, catch yourself. Let's take a chill pill, brother. There's 7,000 of that body that needs to bail. As a matter of fact, you sit right under here. You sit right under that. You know what? Go anoint, go anoint Elijah for you as a successor. Because you're coming home. You're coming home because you, 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 you're depressed now. You're talking about your flesh now. So I send, send a sparrow to feed you. You know, I said whatever, blah, 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 blah. You know, raven to feed you, blah, blah, blah. And then... I could take you on a walk or a journey. That's why he made him walk. That's why he made him walk. So he could get away from the woman of God and he gave him a, you know, angel food to eat because of the long journey. To what? To, to comfort him and to get him to, to think and to get him to refresh himself as he walking. He getting out of that fair tactic. Because one of the number one things the enemy tries to bring a prophet is a fear. A spirit of fear. Eh? The spirit of fear where you, where you feel like you're not inadequate. And you feel like you can't do it. And God has unctionized you and called you for this. But if your cup is already drained and you are not replenishing you got to replenish. If you're a prophetic vessel, people pull on you. They will pull. And you might you might you might think they just have a casual conversation, but you could feel virtue drain out of you. I told my wife on this is so powerful, uh, mighty God. This is coming from um First Lady Marcy. I told my wife um on last week, I said I was talking to a particular individual, and all of a sudden I felt like someone opened me up and put a Put a, I mean, put one of them big straw at me and say, because <coughs> I was talking to so many people, but when this particular individual came around me, I felt, I felt they put a straw at me, a giant straw, and they suck. Right in there, I felt my knees buckle, and I was talking to them regular. I say, mighty God. This person pulled it on me so much, but the thing about it is, they pull it in a very illegal way. It's almost like a vampire who is now sucking off of you. And they were pulling in that way where it's illegal. They're pulling in this way where it's 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 like I'm not I'm not I'm just giving I'm not giving back to you, but I'm just sucking off you and I'm not gonna let you go. Cause as I try to leave, the poison kept me back for another 15, 20 minutes, and they were just oh, oh. so I had to hold on my car and brace myself. Because I'm trying to figure out what's going on, but I'm discerning them, and, and the Lord was showing me that what they're doing is because they want they want to get over what they're getting over instead of allowing the Lord to do that, they suck it. Because they don't want to go to the Lord themselves and, and, and really just spend the time and let God examine and open them up to the thing they're going through. They want a quick fix. And so they are, they're, 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 they're what? They're polluting and they're siphoning and they're stealing, not from a good way, amen? Not from a good way, but from a way where it felt like I was defiled. It felt nasty. It felt like where it was just like someone invaded you. It's invasive, all right? You felt violated in a sense because that's what they were doing in the realm of the spirit. And I, ch I, ch I challenge this person because... It happened, it happened one time ago, and I said, you know what, let me see again. And it happened again, and it happened another time. And what they do is every time you want to leave, they say, well, hold on, hold on, let me, let me ask you this. Or let me ask you this. Or let me ask you that. But what they're doing is they're buying time to tap into and tap into and suck and finish suck the rest out of you. You understand me? Yes, because their assignment is to do that. They, don't, they might not even realize what they're doing. 
Some of them do. And I believe this individual knows know what they're doing. And they know what they're doing. You hear me? But you cannot, you cannot continue to do that. One guy to do that to me so much, and he's a, he's a put his hand on my shoulder and say, boy, what's happening? You know? And one day he he, he did it, he did it, he did it to me so much. I got cross. I said, listen, I said, let me tell you something, brother. If you want anointing and you want power, ask, man. Ask. Don't do that. He said, do what? I said, you know what you're doing. Because it's the same feeling that I had from the other individual. All right? I said, don't do that like that because, you know, don't do that. The person didn't come around me for five years. They was mad at me for five years. I called it out because I said, don't do it. Don't do it. Wait, 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 doing what? You know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. But don't steal like that. Amen? That's illegal. Because at that time, they wasn't living right in here. There's there's, 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 there's some shady stuff. They was on the dark side of the force. They started to call psychics and mamas and doing wood work and all that. So they, they're kind of like, you know, off. But they wanted to steal. People can do that, guys. I don't care what you say. Ultimately, they can't take it all. Right? But they could they could get to the point where you you so depleted that you never move in the, the anointing you're supposed to move in. Uh, Vogue B. Russell said, I stopped answering their calls. And I agree. As a matter of fact, I want to tell you a story, and you might think it's strange. We was ministering to a young lady and her husband, and we were telling them, blah, 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 blah. We told them what happened. We said, listen, the problem started when your house got paid off, and you guys own your house. I said, there's there's a, there's, there's some ladies that, are, that, that, that didn't want to see this happen, and I believe they had some ulterior motives. So we was praying with her, ministered to her. She kept going to the hospital. So one day, we, you know, we, we spoke with her. She said, she said, uh, somebody call her, and they said, they said, you ain't dead yet? And she said, who is this? And they hang up the phone. Within a week time, the woman was dead. Within a week time, the woman was dead. We couldn't get to her no more because she was so scared to answer the phone because anytime she, anytime she, you know, see the phone ringing, she thinking it's them. We were trying to get to her because we couldn't get to her. You know, that's, that was like kind of like the lockdown when everybody's in the lockdown of the pandemic. So we, we kind of pray with her on the phone. And such a nice lady. Such a beautiful soul, you know. And I said, can you think of anybody that, you know, that, you know, that did you wrong or you did them wrong or you've ordered them? She said, no, you know, no. So, you know, I try to live, you know, my life like this and live my life like that and, you know, try to be a good person and all that, you know. And I said, boy, no matter who you think you are, no matter who you have or doing the right thing, there's always someone that doesn't want to see you live. Or make it and that's exactly what happened to her you know she passed on early this year yes yes vogue vogue b says my lord evilness and this is true it's pure evilness it is it's wickedness you know they had to go through to get a house then to, to you know to, to, to go through all the you know the, the, you know people digging your guts then to get the th thing done you know then for it to get paid off it only got paid off through dorian right the, the insurance company wants to say you know bop, 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 bop. let's pay them off Okay, and so they got the house paid off. Now all of a sudden you want to take the house from them? You angry because they got the house paid off? You angry because they possess things? You can get some things yourself. You can be blessed yourself. But let me tell you what is the strangest thing of all, guys, and you know this is true. What about when a person doing a hundred times better than you and still angry that the little you have? What about they way better looking, have more qualifications, got more degrees, they on a different status level, and yet they find time to hate on you when they way up there? That is a mystery to me. Because you got way more than me, you got way more money, you, you're a different status class, you got a better job, you, you're doing way better than me on every level, yet you find time to hate me and persecute me without rhyme or reason. What is it all about? Why are you, why are you coming after me like this? That means there's something in you that they see, that they know if, it, if, it, if you continue to do it, and if you keep on the same track and the same path, you're going you're gonna to excel or beat them or even surpass them. So they try to they try to discourage you via the enemy now via the enemy using them all right but at the same time I also try to figure out what did I do you got you got so much more than me you got property and land the law you got houses that you can't even sleep in you got property you you you're doing good you set for life why you find time to obsess about me why you find time to hate on me why you find time to come plant stuff around my house do this do that do that do what what is it what is it what is it about me because they see the light of Christ on you. They know that if you continue on the right path and you continue on this path with God, you're going to surpass or exceed them and they see you as a challenge. Listen, there's no challenge in God. There's no there's no competitors in God. Those who compete in God, they, they have the flesh. You hear me? They have the flesh and they need healing in the soul. You know? We ain't ever die for nobody. You ain't die for nobody. I ain't die for nobody. Everybody have a level of anointing. God gives them more. God gives them less. Some people operate in all the gifts. Some people operate in certain gifts. 
Everybody have a talent. God has blessed every man with a measure of faith. You just have to develop your faith. Amen? God has given some people the gift of faith. That's a different level. All right? That's a gift. So they'll operate easy in that level of faith. But you have to learn how to be thankful, how to give God glory, stop being envious, stop being judgmental, stop being jealous, stop being hateful. This is what causes people to fight people on their jobs. I agree. This comes from Judy Roberts Salazar. Sometimes it's in your own family. True, true, true words, true words, true words. Yes, they do this because they understand they can never match your integrity, virtue, and greatness. They know that despite their material wealth, you remain richer, and they're not willing to, uh, uh, to, to, to go to that step, I guess, as we're saying. Right? And they see something in you like Daniel with integrity. Mighty God. So God is doing this thing for you. Amen? And so let me just close this out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me just close this out, guys. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just bless everyone that's on this live today. Thank you, Jesus. Every deceptive, every deceptive conspiracy against you, every misdirection, misinformation, every disinformation that they send against you, whenever they are sick or feel down and stressed, I'm calling and I had to learn that they only second on my life and they are very close to me. Yes, yes, yes. And guess what? When is your turn? Ask them where it is. You pray for them, and when, when is your time for them to pray for you? They say, I know. You have them in a dream. And we say, what do you think about this my dream here? They want to interpret it for you. They want to help you. As a matter of fact, they can open doors for you, even when you say, listen, boy, you know, I need help in this area. They know a person who got it. They will never tell you it. Why? Because something in them doesn't want you to, <laughs> to make it. Amen? Hallelujah. I decree that just as Daniel, Daniel was a, had a spirit of excellence, and he was an upright man, that they will find no occasion to, uh, to, to, to bring any type of chaos against you or to accuse you or to find any fault with you. I decree and declare any deceptive spiritual conspiracy, deceptive conspiracy talking against you, any disinformation, misinformation, any twisting of your character, any character assassination, even on a job. And I'm going to tell you where they attack, all right? This area is where they attack first. They attack your social relations. What do I mean by that? You find that people who the ones friend you and who to come on your live or who to come talk to you, who to visit you, they don't friend you no more. They don't talk to you. You don't see them no more. Have you ever seen that? People who started with you, all right? They don't talk to you. You don't hear about them. You don't see them no more. Uh, they, you know, people who once was your friend, you, you don't hear from them in four or five years since. You wonder what you do, right? So what do they do? The first level of attack is they attack your social relationship. So now people turn against you who was once for you, all right? So they don't, you don't hear from them no more. So your social contact. Is what they deal with. Then they deal with your reputation. What do I mean by your reputation? They attack the foundation of, 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 of who you are. Your reputation. If your reputation is bad, listen, things can be rough for you in this town. Wherever you go, people can have no trust in you, no belief. So they undermine your reputation. They try to assassinate the character. All right? Because they know that if they could, if the Jezebels could assassinate your character, both men and women are Jezebels, by the way. If they, if they could assassinate your character, then they could, they could discredit you. All right? So that's another area they attack. Then they attack and they try to they try to attack the quality of your professional life. And then they attack your health. Let's deal with health. You have strange diseases and sickness that you don't even know they come from. You have strange things fighting you. You don't even know what is bothering you. You have strange things that has been taken a toll on you. All right? And you wonder why. Where, where, how come I don't see so-and-so no more? How come so-and-so was passing my shop? You know, and they once one time they come and chit-chat with me, you know. You know, there's a good customer. I would give them deals. You know, they were always bringing clients and customers. Now they no longer do that. What happened? Someone got to them and shared something that was false about you or they twisted something to make it look like you. And so they, they, they try to turn people off from you because now their assignment was to get in close to you. And we talked about that. To get in close to you. Very true job. And then, let me tell you something. Sometimes the worst people that you encounter is on your job. You hear me? Because you can meet every type of enemy in the world right on your job, right? And so they attack your communication. They attack the way you talk, your self-expression. You, you know, uh, you know. They all of a sudden your your your, your boss start to restrict your ability to talk or or you know to, to do things. You know, all of a sudden they, they start to work on you. They start to plan things in your drawer. They plan things in the drawer. See, see that one is a statement. That one is the root working. Look what we found in the drawer. What are they doing? They're trying to make you out to be. Something you're not. Yeah, yeah, see? They had the deep... Uh, uh, we find these candles and they draw. Uh, this person is new age. They're new age. You hear the teaching is new age. They're teaching is new age. What they're doing is they're trying to... They're trying to... They're trying to discredit you, all right? They're trying to 
cause you to lose face, all right? They're ganging up on you. And so they'll say, look, look, yeah, yeah, that one day the doctors, you know, I fight this on them. This is what they do. But they don't tell you how they got to that. They don't tell you what they did to that. But the person who's gullible will believe them. So they you so they constantly criticize you behind your back. They constantly pull you uh, pull you down. I told you about the guy who let who let one of his boys in. I told you about a lady who let one of uh, her friend in, who vouched for her and got her in, and she tried to take the job from the woman. She almost succeeded. Well, this guy he did the same thing for one of his boys. He let his boy in, you know, vouched for him in this big company. The guy was the CEO of the company. And by the time he finished, by the time he finished with that man, he now became the director. He became the director of the company, and the man got fired because the man didn't recognize he was in the spiritual workplace warfare, and he'd opened the demonic gate. The very man he hired was the nail in his coffin. The very man that he thought would have been an asset to him became his worst enemy and took and, and stole his job. Many people don't understand. They're letting in the snakes through the front door. Be careful who you let into your life in the season here. Yeah? Have the spirit of discernment. Teach, 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 teach. You have to have a strong mind and know who you are in Christ. Yes, 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 yes. May God judge them swiftly. I agree with what you're saying right there. Amen? When your reputation comes under attack by co-workers that try to marginalize your, your, your accomplishment and talk behind your back, stab you behind your back, unfounded rumors, un, un, unfounded uh, 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 you know, uh, things that they said, no basis in reality. They talk in strange things. They find you with marijuana on your bike. They found that you'd be talking to the enemy. They found out that you, they catch you on social media doing this in the bush. These, these people are just working against you. Yes, yes, yes. I agree. This guy was so attacked on his job. Man, listen, he ended up in the dire ward. He had a mental breakdown. A mental breakdown from the very one who... This is another case. I could talk about case after case after case after case. All right? And my, my wife has written an excellent book. I want you guys to go on Amazon. I mean, to uh, on our website and get this book. It deals with that sort of thing, but it deals from a therapeutic point of view. All right, you can go and do the work. The work, you know, it, it also helps your mind to relax from stress. All right, the man ended up in a dire ward. He let the he, he let the friend in. Help the friend. The friend went about teaching. Just some good teaching. Praise the Lord. You see, see, this is very encouraging. You know, very encouraging when she said this is good teaching. That means that she's enjoying it. That means she's getting something from it. That means, you know, she experienced something similar. Many of you experience exactly what I'm talking about. I know I ain't lying. I tell you the truth. They they set you up because they're wicked people. And they try to, they try, they felt threatened by you. They felt threatened by you. See, some people, they want you to bring them tote news, gossip all day, bring them all kinds of people business, and, and come in and, and come in lollygag and, and, and you know, uh, bootleg and all that. Then, oh yeah, they could, they could use you. Because because they got you as a steward now, you as a go getter, you as a gopher, and so they can trust you, right? But at the same time, when you start up and you don't get in that stuff, you have a Daniel like character, uh, you know, of integrity. You speak the truth, you speak righteousness, you entertain gossip, you entertain talking about people, you entertain you know foolishness. They get they they, they see you as 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 a threat to them, and they, you ain't a part of the clique now because you ain't scheming, you ain't playing around, you ain't talking about who's sleeping, with who who doing this, and da 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 da. da. And so you upright, you know, you you ain't taking the stables home, you know, you ain't stealing from the boss, all right? You are doing your work and you are doing it with integrity, and you cool with everybody, and they see that as they see that as you think you better than us, you think you's all that, you think you you know you 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 the boss pet, eh? you the boss pet, huh? You the boss pet, huh? Carrie Ann said, "This is some deep knowledge." Doctor Sandra said, "Wicked people." Nisi says, "You're not lying." Let me tell you something. Here's when you know you're under attack. After the man had the meltdown, the man turned around and come to the hospital, you hear me? And brought him flowers. Brought him flowers. Your teachings are always awesome. One of a kind. Very deep knowledge. You share. I'm very grateful. This is coming from SK. God bless you, woman of God. And SK is connected with us. You know, she's very faithful. We bless God for her. We bless God for the woman of God. And we speak endless blessings on SK. In the name of Jesus. So the man... After doing all that, he put the man in the hospital, right? He, he messed the man up. The man was getting ready to fight him, but, you know, he decided, you know, because he's a Christian man, he's also a pastor. He was getting ready to be a pastor, you know? And, and, and he, the, man went, the man went to the hospital and take him some flowers with that demonic glee in his face. You know what he's doing? He come to, he come to, he come to, he come to, put, he come to put salt in the wound. He come to put gasoline on the fire. He come to further kill this man, you know what I mean? He wanted to kill him. The man was almost always on his deathbed from his friend. 
the neighbor who recently opened the same business as mine is on a campaign telling persons one of my uh, one of nasty lies against my family. Mighty God, may God have mercy on him and have his holy day with him. Yes, that's good, woman of God. That's good. Because you see, you, you didn't do nothing to him. And this man, for whatever reason, is totally terrified of you. And the snake spirit is operating through him. Yes, and it is a, it is a snake spirit operating through him. This is an ancient snake spirit operating through this man. Amen? There's a connection with India too. This snake spirit wants to shut you down for whatever reason. This is a very wicked, 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 wicked deal he's doing. Because he made a vow that you can close. But, but, but God will deal with that situation. You hear me? When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up and lift up a standard. He comes in like a flood, but the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And God's going to deal with that situation. And God's going to cause favor to come to your business again. Because I know your business was really doing really well when you first opened up. You were just jamming. But this man saw that and he, and he, and he, he surmised. It's only a matter of time before you before you take over. And that was what the problem was because it was a spirit of jealousy, right? And not, not up in his game, not trying to up his game, but he liked to play nasty. He liked to play a dirty game. He liked to cut people out and cut people from under what they're doing. That's what he does, all right? Some people, that's how they operate. They operate very nasty, all right? They'll get you closed down. There's there's a place that was going to open up here going to be very popular. We think of the place coming. Come to find out the person who was closing it was another businessman telling the people, you, you know, Blocking the license from coming. Blocking the license. You'd be surprised who blocking your permit. You'd be surprised who blocking your promotion because they saw it coming up on the list. And they took an occasion to block your promotion. Block your license. You hear me? And we, was, we, couldn't, we couldn't. The place didn't reach yet. Because they went and they bound the place up. They said, you know what? We can close it down. And they began to talk to the people and shut them down. Pay the money to not allow the license to come through. There are people who are paying people. To stop your blessings from coming through. Mighty God. They're paying people to work on you. They're paying strange people to come and fight you at night time. They're, they're, you know, people have a noise in their head. A woman comes and says, Prophet, say, say, can you go pray in my mother's house? My my mother hearing strange things. People levitating, you know, uh, stuff are moving in the house. You know, the dark shadows walking through the house. Can you go and pray? Can you go and release them from this? And we haven't done that. My mother even not go to the house. Right now she imagines things and she goes to the head. Can you go and pray in the house? There are things that people are going through that's not natural. Yeah, business is booming. And now he talks about when I change my vehicle, he's going to close me down because my family and I don't deserve what we have. Yes, this is money. One L. This is a very, 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 very excellent point. Hallelujah. God bless you. Most of the people that are coming after you, this is Ivor Pratt. God bless you, Ivor. They feel... That you don't deserve what you got. Nor does your family. Who is you to get this opportunity? How you could be on my level? How you could even come here? And then they have a bunch of people backing them. Speaking the same thing about you. They enlist people to pray against you. They enlist people to try to block your ministry. They have people praying against people's ministry right now. Listen. The point of the matter is. They feel that this is too good for you. Who is you? You is a low life. You is nobody. You come from nowhere. We don't even know your stock. We don't even know your breeding. Who is you to come here and have this? That's what, listen, that's what my partner told me who I let in, who took my company. He told me at the end of the day, he said, who is you to get this big, truly knowledge franchise? Who is your little boy like you? You don't even, you don't even know how to run this business. You, 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 this out of your league. This is supposed to be for me. Me and my family are supposed to get this. Little did I know from the time I took him on to the time he took the business from me, he was talking to the people that were in the states that was responsible uh, for the franchise. Listen, this guy was talking to the people from day one, telling them, I can't run the company. I know what they're doing. I don't deserve this. He was he was slowly sabotaging and taking the company from me. That time, I gave him the man money. That time, I buy him a car. That time, I let him all the information. That time, I tried to make him a full partner. That time, I tried to set up accounts. And the Lord freeze the accounts. I didn't even know why. The, you know why I was at one point he had all my employees that I that I that I that I that I uh, that I got he had them answering to him only I asked one of the guys to get some of my truck the guy looked at him and only when he noticed head like that he went to get the stuff and I said oh shoot this guy really really run it he said you you just go get the business don't even come around his office go get the business he literally took the company from me and what he said was what one he said you don't deserve this this is too good for you how come a little boy like you got a million dollar franchise 
This is what exactly what he said. And he took it from me. You hear me? Him and another friend who I told was a friend who I let in my office and let him stay. They bound it together. They bound together. And I didn't know the friend was watching me all along, was envious. Mind you, he had his own company, his own franchise. He has since apologized and he's made it right. This, this particular individual, not the other one, but he's made it right. And he, you know, he apologized and he moved on. That's what he's supposed to do. The other one has not, has not apologized, nor has he, nor has I, nor has I, have I seen him. Because when the Lord will finish with him, it took me seven more hard years. I went through mostly with three levels of seven, seven, seven. And all those had me living uh, in the bush or in cars. And I knew this is what the enemy wanted me to do. Please pray for me and my husband when we get home from church. I think there was a snake on the outside window or uh, still on my deceased son's bedroom and our house, my matter of settlement for the house. In the name of Jesus, that's what it is. It's concerning the settlement of the house. They don't want you to get it. They send this enemy. That is an enemy. I cancel it over your life, woman of God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cancel it over your life right now. I release the original plan and bless the Lord. I chop that snake off in the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. One gentleman came to me and said, Prophet, I need to talk to you. He said, listen, listen, man. You know, he said, I need you to train me and teach me because this knowledge you have and what you've given out, you know, is very powerful. He said, you, you, you know, you talk about snakes. He said, but recently, um, you know, I, uh, uh, my son saw a snake at our back door. And so he run the snake. He said, the next day, the snake come back again trying to get inside. I said, man of God, let me tell you something. I said, that's no, that's nothing but... The enemy trying to stop your blessings, stop the breakthroughs coming for you and your sons. And I and I, and I said, you know, I think I think there's people who around you, but also his family members. You know, he said, you know, he said, he said the prophet has already told me that too. I said, there's only confirmation. I, you know, you send a snake away, run the snake. Now the snake back there again, trying to get inside, but you catch it. That means that there's something that's monitoring your life to keep you in the place. And I told him, I said, listen, man of God, I don't see you at your house where you at or the, or the apartment you're in. I said, I see you in the house. And it's been, I, I think they've been there for maybe 20 years. And they've not moved from that place to a house. And so they've all grown it by leaps and bounds. But, you know, nevertheless, I said, I see you in another house. Catherine says her husband, Kathleen, sorry, says her husband chopped the snake head off. Now I want you to go wherever you chop the snake head off, wherever it's found, at the back door or your son's bed, and anoint that place. And pray in that place for at least an hour. Amen? And command whatever was trying to come to the window to be canceled. You have a point of contact. I'm not there. So you go and you do that, woman of God. Amen. Snake GPSing. Yes. He was he was trying to triangulate on you, woman of God. They're trying to watch you so they could so they could they could initiate this this thing what they're doing to cause favor to come to them where they're doing the dash what they did within the court system. So you gotta fight in the realm of the spirit, amen. And reverse that thing. Cut the head off. That's just what you can do in the court. Cut the head off. People are too wicked using these things to oppress people, to keep them down, to take jobs from them. And to, and, 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 and to keep them in a place where they can't move forward. Many people desire to move forward, but they can't move forward because they have this thing that is walking and fighting against them. The man of God said, I don't know what to do. The snake come back again. You know, you you got rid of the snake, and now the snake back again? What does it mean? And trying to come into the same spot? The woman of God just says she had the snake by the window door where her son died. Huh? These same people trying to, they try to initiate another covenant to keep the thing going. Huh? I know this family, each one of them started to die, started to die. I said, listen, look at, you see what's happening? You see what's happening? There's a covenant of death released upon you. You don't even see it. People dying in your, your life, in your family life every year. Look at the covenant of death. And you still thinking, oh, that's just life. But these people who steal other people's blessings can't even prosper. Ask them if they can even prosper. Say that aloud. Say it again. Like years ago, I was dating a well-known person. And a person who I prayed... I pray but told me the man was too good for me. Right after that, the man gone, mighty God, mighty God. You all hear this? I want you to listen. I want you to listen. Listen very well. I can do like the African people. You must listen very well. <laughs> now, Sandra says, many years ago, she was dating a well-known person. And a person who she prayed with told her the man was too good for her. Right after that, the man gone. Oh my God. Listen, we could preach a sermon on this. Thank you very much for that input, woman of God. Listen, I've had people tell me, listen, the bike you're riding is too good for you. How you get the bike? And right after that, I got an accident on the bike. I've had people tell me the same thing with, with the company. And right after that, all kinds of hell break loose of the company. And you hear she saying she was seeing a well-known person. The person told her 
that this man too good for you. How you think about your friend? But the point of fact, what you were saying is, I want that man, or I don't want to see you with that man because I think he do good for you because it can be of come up for you. But the point of fact, the point of fact, that that man, even though he had all that stuff, it well known, it was a come up for him with Doctor Sandra because she's a she's a spiritual woman, she's a woman of God. You hear me? But you see, there's a people close to you don't want you to have nothing good. They want you to be just three levels or below them. You don't mind you eating. You don't even mind you getting the food. But you cannot surpass them or come up to the level. No, 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 no. We got to pull the rug from under you. We got to teach you a lesson. As a matter of fact, you get to do big for your britches. There are some people who support you when you're very small business. They'll come to you every day. The minute you get a bigger building, they turn off from you. Or you, you, you think you, or you think it's all that. Or my money do good for you now. And so they boycott you. And they tell everybody don't go there because they got an attitude because they get a bigger building. That means growth. That means they're growing. What, are, what, what problem you have with them growing? That's expansion. That happens. Even the bacteria grows. Even viruses grows. Why you have a problem with them expanding? Why you have a problem with them growing? There's a man, he was doing so well. As long as he was small, as long as he had a small little corner shop, the minute he built a big shop and began to begin to challenge the, 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 the country on, on you know getting the concession to bring in a certain product, boy, they boycott that building. That building is almost like a ghost building. Huh? He, had to, he, had to, he, had to, he had to lease it out. He had to rent the thing out. And he and the turn they they literally shut him down. Let me do something. We behemoth people have to get rid of that black crab syndrome and people all over the world apparently. That black crab syndrome, that hater raid syndrome. They hear you get promoted, they hear you get elevated, they hear you get a good job, and they hate that. They start praying against you. They even know what what you go through on a job. They start praying against you as well. Because they don't like the fact that they heard people saying you know, so and so doing this, or so and so doing this, or so and so getting this, and so and so getting this. You know, people people don't want to see you elevate. They don't want to see you. You get ordained. You get blessed. You you become um, um you know God called you to be. They find you even in that. Huh? There's a spirit that has that's been brought over from slavery. You hear me? From the slave master, the white slave master, or, or the bright skin, the bright skin house nigger, as they call him. Right? And then they got the hand, the field hands, and they got they got the women and the children. And they, they, they create a class race. They create the, 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 the class race within the very fabric of the slave movement. And they turn the slave hand or the field hand against the against the, the bright-skinned slave who live in the house. What they call it the house negro. Yeah? And then they, they, they make them talk with each other. And then they make the women them, they make the women them to be fighting each other. Right? Because they create that, 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 that environment and atmosphere. And they create the Willie Lynch syndrome. They create the Willie Lynch syndrome. The Willie Lynch curse, and it's been operating for almost 300, 400 years. The Willie Lynch curse is still alive and well, whereas we don't want to see our own do well. How many times I've seen expatriates and foreigners come here, and they say, we want to give um, you guys um, you know, a top salary. Then you have some house nigger, excuse me, Negro, will tell them, say, no, you don't have to give them all that. Give them this. Give them, three, give them $5 an hour. Why you won't give them $14 an hour? Why you won't give them $18? No, 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 no. Give them, give them six fifty. You hear me? And I heard the white people talking in their restaurants how, how, the black people is keeping their own people down and doing a way better job, saving them all kinds of money, all kinds of profits. You know, they're coming about the the boys through because they got they sick of black poison on them, keeping their own people down. Yes, sir, boss. You think they're going to that right here? Except it's now on our minds. You hear me? It's a mental slavery that we got to get rid of. That's why they fight you on the jobs, huh? This curse has to be broken. And I did an in-depth teaching on that. And I can tell you about how it is to bug break them and tell you all the stuff and how it is to destroy any type of any type of confidence the man have in himself and how it is to how it is to use them and, and use them as chattel, right? Chattel. They they, 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 they were they were one step above pigs. We were one step above pigs and, and, and cattle, alright? We were we were known as chattels. They used to put us on the, on the on auction block. Alright? Look at your teeth, look at your gum, look around you, look at your belly, look at this, look at that. You could be used how you want to. As a matter of fact, if they killed you, it wasn't no big deal. It's like you killing, you might as well go kill a pig. Nobody gonna, they're gonna put you in jail for killing a pig. You're a pig, all right? Malvano says, Malvano says, we African people full of hating one another. Or hate one's people, yes. And they create this class rate, then they sit down and they watch us destroy each other. They watch us destroy each other. They watch, like, like I say, like crab in a barrel. This is from Michelle, he was saying. Like crab in a barrel. They watch us destroy our own. They watch us have to be jealous. If you if you get a new car, they, they hate on it. Praying against the car. Lay hands on the car. Hope the car don't work. Huh? 
I had I had a car. The guy told me said this car too good for you. Where you get this car from? I had a nice Porsche. All right? Said so the same thing. All of a sudden the Porsche had development problems. The, the Porsche stay stay getting fixed. They didn't understand that it was it was because of what was said and done. Huh? Make you only want to drive your car at night time now. Go at night time, wait till everybody's sleeping and you go down Chicken Farm Road. It's still there. I believe that's why my son, a young doctor, is deceased today. And and Kathleen Ramming has a very good point. And and they knew that this man was gonna be a blessing. This man was about to come up with some invention, this man could come up with some procedure or you know, that is gonna revolutionize maybe the world. And yet they sought to take this man out because they know that he's gonna be a blessing to her. But may the Lord give her triple for ripple and double for trouble. May the Lord give healing and may the Lord give her justice for what is done. Yes, you can get away from man. The word chattel is used today when getting a mortgage. You see, this is deep wisdom right here. You hear Dr. Sandra say, the word chattel is used when getting a mortgage. Mortgage is debt. Debt, that's the word with the morgue. Morgue, chattel. They see you, they see you as, as, a, as a dead slave or a slave to debt. All right? And that's what they do. That's what you are. You are a slave to, to make them. They, they saw you as potential. They saw you breeding. That's why, there's a, that's why they do something called selective breeding or buck breeding. They have to take the most powerful buck or the biggest buck. And they get the most powerful, uh, beautiful woman with the best shape. And there's the bug breed them. Uh, they call them a stud. A stud farm. All right? So that's what they see. Hey, boy, he's a stud. That was, that was for cows and, and bulls. And, and boy, like, uh, you know, you got straight like a bull. What do you think that meaning? They have to call the male slaves a bull. All right? And they have to breed him because he could go continuously. Right? He can breed maybe 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 100 women, one guy. Huh? Because there's a, they want to put a seed so he can come out big and muscular and they could get... They could get their money's worth out of him and they could use it to the fullest capacity. So that's what they was doing. Yes, saw his style, chopped him down. Yes, that's right. That's right. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, we decree anybody who's been fought in a job. If you're a teacher and you're being fought in a job and they're trying to fight you in a job, mighty God, because I remember, I recall. Um, several teachers tell me, say, man, listen, we've been fought on a job so bad, but after you prayed for us, the Lord causes us to get shift and a transfer, and, 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 and apparently, apparently everybody who went to that, went to that, that particular school would complain about how this principal and her cronies and her, her lackeys, they, uh, when certain janitors would lock down, if they don't like you, they lock you out, and they lock you down, and they make your life miserable. So she said, you know, uh, Prophet Spencer, we've transitioned now to this wonderful school. I'm so happy. I'm so grateful. There's someone you've been fought in the school ram. I'm looking at you in the realm of the spirit and you're being fought in the realms of your teaching capacity. They're undermining you. They're fighting you. They're making you feel like you're in like you, 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 you don't know what you're saying. They cut you off. They send you memos. They try to, uh, they try to oust you. They, they try to make you look like you're a problem child. In other words, they, they, yeah, they, you always got some sort of agreement. You're disagreeable. You don't, you don't operate with us. You don't go hang out with us. You don't go do what you're doing. So they've been trying to literally set you up to lose your job. Prophet, that is why we have to evangelize and teach love. And again, as Jesus basically said, love thy neighbor as yourself. And if you live like this, there will be no ugliness and hate. I totally agree. I totally agree. And I, I agree 100%. And we would love to live like that. And we are trying. That's why I'm doing all these teachings. And you're right. Because we have to show that. But a lot of times, a lot of times, if they don't get deliverance and we don't pray over certain areas, to break the spirit that's over certain areas, we will continue to go around and the evangelism will seem like it just, you're making a dent. Because why? Because the, the prevailing spirit over the nation, over the country, has it on a lock. So we have to dispossess the spiritual strongman and the physical strongman. For every counterpart, there's a physical counterpart and a spiritual counterpart. You mean? Where there's a strongman, whether you know him or not, you don't even know who the strongman is in your, in your region or in your school, but he's there nonetheless. There's a spiritual strongman over him too. There's a, there's a spiritual strong man over the city. But there's also a physical one there too that operates in tandem or in conjunction with them. That they have been trying to teach you. Amen, 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 amen. Yes, listen to the teachings, then Amanda. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Stay on listening to the teachings. It's good, very good. They help you all. The principalities over this region. Yes, the principalities over certain regions and particularly in the Bahamas and the Caribbean, basically, is the religious spirit. It is the spirit of the python that, that keeps us 
in a particular mode where we whisper, they whisper to one another. And also the spirit that also wants to fight people on their job, all right? Fight them on the job. Fight them to the place where they want to give up, want to let go. Fight them in the marriages, amen? Fight them in the marriage. Some people get married, you know? People say, boy, you get married? So anybody can get married now, eh? I remember a person said that. Boy, boy you get married? Boy, married, married, going to the dogs, eh? You, you, you get, you. so anybody can get married now. Why would you say something like that? Even if you're thinking in your heart, you shouldn't say that. That's that's not nice to say. You, know, you don't know what a person fought with. You don't know the strongholds that person had to deal with to even get to the level of marriage, and that's what you can say. That tells you that the enemy is speaking to the person whether they knew it or not. Catherine, Catherine Ramin said this is so informative. Catherine E. Ramin said this is very informative. And so, so guys, you know, this is what I'm saying. You don't know what that person is going through. Like, like, uh, like Michelle said, you don't know what a person is going through. We must preach love and deliverance. But at the same time, there are some strongholds that are causing the person to act weird, do certain things, fight one another. Because it's, in, it's what? It's, it's deeply entrenched in the whole fabric of where they come from. Right? Nobody gets out, nobody leaves. Nobody ever makes it out. Right? If you make it out, they still follow you there. Right? I've had people tell me, say, man, I moved to another island and I was doing good for six months and now I'm back to that same old place. Why? Because even though they moved, they've not gotten rid of, the, they've not got delivered from that altar that's operating. And so you need to have that altar where you get fired every three months, two months, one month. Huh? You don't even last. Huh? People even tell you they can hire you and then when you, when you go back to get a job, they say you hire somebody else before you even got to your job. This is a spirit that needs to be broken. And I agree. We need to love one another. But let me tell you, something. Let me tell you what love really is. Love is when love is when you decide to do warfare and you go into warfare and you go to spiritual warfare and you break holes over people's lives. You break it over cities. You break it over individuals. That's love right there at the highest level. Because you can say you love me and you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> huh? You can say you love me, but I watch your actions. Actions will speak. You see what you, you want to tell you what love is? Love is right there what I'm doing. I'm teaching you and coming on every day. That's love. Well, it's not every day, but you know, as the Lord leads, but on Sundays. And I teach you deep stuff. I don't give you warm over stuff. I don't give you platitudes. I give you deep stuff that you know what I'm talking about. Amen? Because because I'm, I'm I'm seeing that people need to get delivered and they don't need to go around this mountain again because I I got I was I was privy to a lot of good teachings when I was young, but I don't see the teaching no more. This was like this was like at least about forty years ago, right? Maybe maybe, maybe let's say this thirty five. Let me let's say thirty five. I don't see the teaching no more. Because we've watered down the gospel to where it's only name and claim it and prophecy, I mean, and, 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 and uh, uh, um, what do you call it, prosperity, right? We've, we've changed. Now, prosperity is a byproduct of living holy. Yes, God does, he does, he does delight when you prosper and be in good health. But he wants your soul to prosper. Many people's soul is not prospering. You can't teach love or give love which you don't have. You have to have the love of God in you and you have to submit to that process to get delivered. You understand me? How can you give something you don't have? It can be a pseudo fake love. You have to have the love in you because you need to be delivered from some things. Alright? So you can give the true love. And I ain't talking about I ain't talking about this Eros love or or you know or brother love. I'm talking about the agape unconditional love. Yes, the highest level of freeing people is is deliverance. Because they call it the nasty, dirty ministry. They call it the dirty ministry. People tell you, say, don't say you're deliverance ministry. Say your ministry is gonna last a year. They say, if you, won't, if you won't come to my church and you won't speak, don't say you as a deliverance minister. Say you as a prophet, but don't call it a deliverance minister. Don't say you that. Don't say you Don't say you that because nobody want to hear about it. Anybody want anybody, 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 anybody coughing? Anybody want anybody vomiting? Anybody want anybody a demon manifesting in the church? Who been going to your church for 40 years and you preaching them every Sunday and now someone come over and preach and they manifest and they're writing the church all the time? That means what you doing? I mean, you was placating and helping this thing. And maybe if you don't move in a capacity, you don't want it to move in anyhow. Some people made friends with their demons. Some people made friends with their with, 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 with their affliction. You hear me? They made friends with their sickness. My diabetes, my sickness, my my uh my you know my, my eye problems, uh, my this, my gum thing, my this, my that. It's your problem. Why is yours? How's yours? That ain't yours. How get yours? It's the is the is the enemy's own. These teachings are so life changing. It has helped to transform my life, and I love where I am and getting better. To God be the glory. This is coming from Chantel Bethel. Let me tell you something, guys. She told me this on, I think, last week too. And it so encouraged me because sometimes we're feeling down. Sometimes we're being attacked, right? And sometimes we, you know, sometimes we spend hours and hours, uh, you know, um, searching the scriptures, you know, getting downloads from the Lord, being attacked while they're doing it, right? And so to hear people saying, oh, we need to do that, and then 
nobody's trying to support or help, and, and it's discouraging. Let's be real. But when you hear people saying stuff like what Chandel said and, and, and Michelle Hughes saying, then we know that we're on the right track, you know. Uh, um, uh, sometimes people don't hear the truth because, like she says, it's embarrassing. And, and at the same time, they in partnership with some of these things, you know. So the, you know, it's really, really what's happening is God is gonna God is gonna break down the churches. And I ain't trying to create. I'm not combative. I'm not fighting nobody. I don't. I don't have no interest. Nobody's paying me to say nothing. The Lord is setting up a new crew. And until the churches, major churches, begin to move in, in serious deliverance and get people set free and really true, really teach about how people can maintain their freedom and get back to the basics, you can see no nobody moving like that. They're gonna be stuck. There's gonna be no revival. But the Lord is gonna do this, and the Lord is gonna move some people out of the way. Yes. And he's going to put a people of his own heart. I told a person, I said, I said, God put you in this business to be a blessing to people. I said, God put you in this business to be a blessing to people and to help particularly the people of God. And they agreed to everything I said and did the exact opposite. All they're doing is enlarging themselves. All they're doing is feeding themselves. All they're doing is enlarging their crew. All right? They them crews and stuff. They enlarging themselves and they're oppressing people. And this is the same Pharaoh, the spirit of the Pharaoh that has taken place again. And the spirit of Pharaoh, the spirit of, of Pharaoh is, is the spirit of what? Incarceration and the spirit of slavery again. The spirit of incarceration and the spirit of slavery, all of them walk together. You hear me? That's why they'll try to steal from your job. That's why they try to get you fired. They're not feeding the sheep. Yes, they're not. They're giving a problem. When people will be uh, so far ahead in the spirit, they still have them bench warming. When they're supposed to be preaching, they're keeping them sit down. When they're supposed to have them you know, going out and doing the work of the Lord, doing the work of the ministry. You hear me? Where are the, where, where the people on the corners? Where are the people on the byways and the highways preaching deliverance? Where are the people out there preaching in tents and meetings and going to the neighborhoods? I don't see them. Maybe they are doing it. Bless God if they're doing it. But one time, that's what I grew up on. Everywhere I go, there's a corner. Someone was giving out a track. Someone was ministering to you. Someone was preaching the gospel. Someone was saying what does the Lord on the corners in the temple. We've gotten so sophisticated. We've gotten so high now that it takes you about 50, it took about 50 people to get to the pastor now. 50 people, all right? And you can't hear back from them for seven years, all right? Where we used to go out into the community, all right? And we used to minister to people in the community, all right? At their point of need, but now it's out of fashion. It's not fashionable anyhow. Because guess what? Some people will never come to church. Some people will never, ever put their foot in the church. But guess what? They see you out of the park. They see you on the highways. Why do you think God raised people up like myself to be on the highways and the byways, to stand on corners and to minister the gospel and, and, and to see, see the people's life? Because God knows how to catch a fish. So he allowed me to prophesy, but then also to minister the word of God. All right, at the same time. And he draws them closer. Then they want to get excited. Then they want to, they want to study. Then they want to, you know, they want to know about spiritual warfare. Then they want to get closer to God. Because God knows how to catch a fish. All right? If you want to catch a whale, you can't use, you can't use bait to catch uh, to catch a you know a porgy or to catch a you know a snapper, you gotta use whale bait. You gotta come with that serious bait. All right. If you want to catch a shark, you can't use what you can catch a barracuda with. You gotta use something different. Prophet, I've learned so much from your teachings. You open our eyes to what's going on all around us. Thank you for all the wisdom, keys you you gave us. Continue to let God use you to minister to His people, and just see more. Praise God. Yes, the slavery thing has a, has, has not gone. Here in Africa, is dominating and it's done discreetly. I agree. And I totally agree with what Carla uh, Knowles just said. This is coming from Carla Knowles. And this is what God, this is my mandate. This is what I've been uh, called to do. And then and I've run it for the longest time. I've run it, I've run it, I've run it. Because I knew what prophets go through. I knew what pastors go through. I know that they lie on you a lot. And then when you have them so much, they still turn around and talk bad about you. They never tell them the good you do. They only tell them the bad. I know about this. I know what people really twist in your words. Amen. And saying you say this. I never tell people not to say it. They still go and tell the people what you say and, 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 and open you up to all kinds of fighting now, all kinds of oppression. <laughs> and you try to give them a headway to show them what the enemy is doing. And so sometimes you can't you can't even tell them who the enemy is. You just have to pray for them in secret. And then because they come there to, to be an open door to cause problems. We used to be so scared of missionaries back in the day. Now it's changed. People robbing the church. You ever heard about such a thing? People robbing the church, robbing the people inside the church. You hear me? One time ago, if you see a pastor coming or a man of God coming, and you call him, excuse me, Rev, Rev, forgive me, Rev, uh, you know, Rev, or you, you know, you walk on the next side, right? And you say, how you doing, man of God? How you doing? Now they'll come up to you and they'll rob you. They'll fight you. They'll rob the church. Teeth from the church. Teeth from the church. Teeth from the plate. Yes, they will come in and rob the church. Some of them come in and try to shoot the church up. 
Some of them come and try to, to, to go and wind up on the on the pulpit, you know, and take the take the mic of the person's hand. What disrespect they're showing to the house of God. But when the house of God is broken down, when there's no hedge, the serpent will bite. If the hedge is broken, the serpent will bite. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? This is a very deep thing, guys. And it all goes back to what we're talking about. All this workplace warfare, all this stuff, has its basis in the slave mentality. There are slaves who love their chains. And so because they love the chains, there's nobody standing in the gates. The doors are broken down. The walls are broken down. There's nobody standing in the hedge. There's nobody making up the gap. And so God had to send what? He had to send judgment on the nation. Prophet, I bless God for you and pray for you and Mama Kia. Always. What I learned from God through you, I can pray for and with a brother and sister, and I can even teach them what I've learned. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying every, I, I enjoy inviting them. Praise God. Yes, you, you have woman of God. Bless God. I didn't even know, I didn't know it was, it was one of you, but I invited all of them. <laughs> why do you do that? Bless the Lord. I even forget. Sometimes you see, you forget. This has been like, I don't know, it's been close to five years since. But I bless God for all of you guys. And I just want to say, there's so much more. I could go, I could go to, I could go to so much different levels on this, but you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna stop right there. And I do I do wish for you guys to get a book. It's the newest book we have there. All right, dealing with workplace warfare. And then um, I'm gonna release a book, and it's already done. Just see if we get it done properly. Um, dealing with it specifically, we're gonna have like you know thousands of prayers, thousands of strategies. All right, we're gonna deal with cases, scenario, and we're gonna go fully out into what we're dealing with because too much people are going through this. I guarantee you. If you apply the principles and apply uh, the uh, the teachings, um, you're gonna get set free. Amen. It may not happen overnight, but you will begin to recover, and you will begin to get all. Amen. Because you gotta stick with it. Consistency is the key in anything you do. All right. If you do it haphazard, do it willy nilly, you're not gonna achieve it. Amen. Yes, that's why Jesus threw down the table, the temple, and said, "You've made my house a den of thieves and robbers." Yes. Yes, yes, there's no watchman on the wall, I agree. And so because there's no watchman on the wall, the enemy can come in with an elite, and then can come in at ease. And so we need we need God to restore the watchman order again. Yes, the intercessors. The intercessors are the watchmen in the spirit. Yes, they are the watchers. They got prophetic intercession. They got prophets who also intercede as well. They got interceding prophets, which should be good in that prophetic class, in that prophetic teaching. And the course, we're coming up, we're going into, we're going into a deeper level, all right? So this intermediate, uh, where we do start it, so we're going to be talking about the prophetic intercessors and the prophets who are called to intercede, who go into those rams, and then because there's rams and regions you can go into that are so deep, and then people think it's the seven levels. No man, it's way more than that. And then there's different levels of seeing too. All right, there are different levels of seeing, and there are seers, and they also got the seer prophet intercessor, which which is a combination of both. And then the seer and the prophet, who, who's who's audio visual cortexes. God has God has developed the audio visual cortex in his brain. And he's also developed. He's also developed the seeing aspect, and then he sees with the brain. He sees with the spirit. He enters into the spirit. He interacts with the spirit. He sees with the spirit, and it's almost like a three D holographic situation. But he also can move in that realm, and then he can tap into the mountain of God. He can sit in the council of God, and he can come down and go into those realms and get what he need for you. Uh, for you. Love your teachings. Uh, uh, I love love your. Your love for teaching us about God is so powerful that you that you say, I am not saying staying long and there's God caught up in the flow. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. So we're gonna we're gonna call it quits right there. God bless you guys. God bless you guys. I love you all. Um please stay tuned for when we're gonna be doing our prophetic deliverance service is coming up soon. Stay tuned. Please look on the check the board, check our posts, people. We post it most of the times. All right, people still say they. I, I, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it. Please look. Then I do teachings on it, and I, and I do announcements. Right. So get ready. We're gonna do one soon, and we're gonna give you at least about two weeks, so you can prepare to make the move, and then and get here to the service where the power of God will be demonstrated. We're not gonna talk about it. We're gonna show you the demonstration. We're gonna show you what our God can do. We ain't just coming to you with speech and fair words. We're coming to you with a demonstration of the power of God. Amen. So you're gonna get you're gonna see God moving in action, amen. Deliverance, healing, and miracles. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, amen. And so we see this under the blood of Jesus Christ. Everyone who's watching, I surround you with the bloodline. I draw the bloodline around you and your and, and yours. Amen. And I cover you with the blood until we meet again. I speak healing, blessings, increase, and love to you. 
in Jesus Christ by the name. Amen. Thank you, Carrie Ann, for putting it up. I bless God for Carrie Ann. I speak a blessing over her and everything she does. Amen. In this season, may the Lord, may the Lord fight for Carrie Ann in, the, in this season. So Peter, could you go live on Facebook with your services? <laughs> We want to, but last time we had such a back, such a bad backlash for the people complaining. You know, one one person she made it bad for everybody else. She was saying, "I pay my money for this. You don't pay nothing. It was free. <laughs> and it didn't come out as unprofessional. It's this that 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 that. You know, we said, you know, we we prefer to do it professionally, and you know, just do it well. You know, if we could find people with equipment and they could help us and use it or whatever case may be, that'd be good. But we wanna we wanna upgrade." Amen. Kevin says, God bless you and your wife, man of God. Amen. Thank you. Says Carla. Okay, so God bless you guys. I'm going to eat some food now. Bring back the Zoom teachings probably. <laughs> we haven't done a Zoom in a long time. I, 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 I digress. We need to get back with the Zoom teaching. Those Zoom teachings will be on another level because they're very personal. And we really, really can move in the spirit. Amen. Those, they're, they're on a different platform from the Facebook. They're on a whole different dimension from Facebook. Because it's so up close and personal, and we get to minister one on one, amen. So it's really, it's a, it's it's something different, amen. All right, because 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 Denisha says please, with three Z's we're gonna do it. At least I think it's four Z's. We're gonna bring it back for you, woman of God, amen. God bless you. We're gonna we're gonna send invite to you. When we send invite, don't don't turn us down because that 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 uh that means we're gonna invite you once. If we see you we ain't coming on, then we will move, amen. All right, bless you, bless you, bless you. Now she put she put seven Z's, eight Z's. Okay, it's done. Denisha, you convinced me. We're gonna do it. Amen. All right. <laughs> God bless you. All right. See you guys. Love you. <laughs>